gang, gang. Baby, pop the top and let it spread. As we're listening to past the grave, we're going fishing for your bitch today. We're drunk in Houston, eh? Houston, baby. Now we go hit and lick and we'll get rich today. Rich, bitch. Gravy, 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 yay! What is going on, everybody? Happy gravy day to you and yours. It's Pat's Gravy, episode 558 with Alex, Pat, and Bobby. Birthday boy last week jokes. What's going on? I was trying to come up with a better nickname. What's going <laughs> on, guys? Is that a birthday shirt that you got? Is that a new shirt? No, this is my wedding shirt. You worked on my wedding. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's a great shirt. It's a it is a great shirt. We did compliment him do they, on like how dope he looked at my wedding. Yeah. Do you do you do you know if they make that shirt in fat fuck sizes? <laughs> I think they might. Good, because I just want to. What if I just started dressing like Bobby? Like I snuck a camera into his home, and every day I just wore exactly what Bobby wore. You could do That'd like where cool. his his girl has uh, Sam has her own like is that like it's like a fashion. <laughs> Instagram. That'd be funny if you just did like Roberto fashion and it's just shirt of the day. Like it's just fashion that Robert would be inspired by, but not from Robert, from you thinking it would be inspiring Robert. I think that would actually work better than than us trying to have him review chairs. It's just every day he needs to take it. It would have been perfect for Vine. You just take a three second clip in your mirror and you go, This is the shirt today. And just that's it. Just but every day we want to see what Bobby's wearing. Yeah, I mean, I really feel like there's not a lot that would be easier than chair reviews. You just literally have to sit down to review it. It's very easy. Uh, I mean, shirt of the day, you just have to put on a shirt every day. That sounds like it's easier than writing a review. No, but you had to sit. Wearing, what is Pat wearing? What are you wearing, Pat? Let's show off. What's our fit? Look oh, like I'm wearing a, a black T-shirt that I wear to work every day. Oh, wow. What kind of graphics or things are on it? It is a plain black T-shirt because I wear it to work. Ooh, he is the personality. Also, he need his shirt. I love that black is what we wear because it is very slimming. And I am an aforementioned fat fuck. Do you wear like a coat, like a chef's coat or anything over it? No, I wear an apron. Do you wish you had a chef coat? Like that would be cool. Fuck right? no, dude. That would be kind of cool. No, chef, no, I like peacock outside of work. At, at work, I want to blend in. Would it look weird it's, if it I just really wore funny a chef every coat? Time, yeah, it'd really? look very weird. If uh, every like time we get like, a new guy in the kitchen for like a week, every time like they're talking to me, they're like, yes, chef, yes. And I just ignore it until eventually they just stop saying chef at the end of it. Because I'm assuming one of the other guys will hear him and be like, dude, he's not even working in the kitchen. I would want to go by chef after seeing the bear. That's all. I'd be like, <laughs> said it. They called me chef. Yeah, chef. Yep, chef. Please keep calling me chef, chef. Thank you for calling me chef, chef. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. Because then when customers ask me things like, is it a fishier fish or is it a meaty fish? Or, or just, you know, ridiculous, stupid questions. Make it I up. Be like, I don't know. They'll make, dude, you're Make a chef. Up. You should know. You're the chef. I mean, I, mean, I do. They, yeah, that's all you got to do. Oh, it's the best fish. The best quality we have ever had. You came at the right day. And they'll be like, that wasn't that good. That chef said that. And they're like, oh, no, he's not a chef. Is your redfish farmed or wild caught? I only eat wild caught. Wild sure. caught, fresh caught today. Which, by the way, caught it myself. By the way, I think I've brought this up before, but just so everyone knows, you can't buy wild caught redfish. It's illegal, in, at least in Texas. It has to be farm raised. Oh, I get wild caught. I know a guy. Well, you're you're a bad boy. Catches it wild, brings it right to me. You're probably Play also shit up. slowly poisoning yourself. That's why I do it. But yeah, for people that don't know, redfish, always farm raised. Who would have known if Pat hadn't told us? Nobody, and nobody would have ever asked. I would have asked, Pat. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, to tell you guys things that you don't want to know against your will. <laughs> against your will. <laughs> I guess how many times I wiped today. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs>
Well, on that um, note, we should probably get started. <laughs> yeah, you had, yeah, I was. I didn't know where else you were going with that, dude. I didn't want to. I didn't want to oh, ruin had, your momentum. This is the pickup usual, segment. I don't have anywhere to go with anything. I just start this talking until we, you stop we, me. Get it all out. We get all the whatever we had. I had some ideas if you guys wanted to run through this. Actually, let me start off with. Uh, I saw an ad. I'm, I I ranted about ads for a while back in the podcast a couple months ago. I felt like every week I was like, "What the fucking the deal with this ad?" I'm watching the Yankees Diamondbacks game, and I saw this during the Yankees Astros series this weekend. It was buildsubmarines.com was behind the batter. So I was like, you know, I'm an I'm a man that, that gets interested in things pretty easily. So I was like, well, I have a phone. I went and looked, and it is um building and working in the submarine building. So a lot of welding mostly, but there are links to go like where you could build your own submarine and that is a brilliant idea because you guys know uh as documented on this podcast that i've drunkenly been watching baseball before and been like hey i kind of want some sunflower seeds and so i ended up spending a bunch of money on sunflower seeds that i didn't need i wonder how many billionaires are just going to be like drinking their scotch a little sloshed watching a baseball game and they're like shit build a submarine they spend like a half million dollars drunkenly buying a submarine or building their own. And the next day they wake up like, oh, what have I done? Getting delivered next week. The thing is, guys at that level of richness, they don't buy anything themselves. They text their money man and go, hey, buy this. And the money man will be smart enough to be like, I'm going to wait till tomorrow when they're sober. That might be Like, true. when's the last time you think Jeff Bezos bought something? Like himself. Like outside. Like Years. A- I mean, I bet he buys food and shit. Do you? There's zero percent chance Jeff Bezos does at a restaurant. Food shopping. At a restaurant. Oh, I yeah, okay. he buys things. I, yeah, I didn't. If you take away restaurants, like paying for your bill there, like I'm talking about actually going somewhere and buying something. Because that um, doesn't happen. It was, I think it was Bill Gates. Was it, no, what's the guy that like lives in Kansas? The really rich dude. He was in the office. Warren Buffett, right? I think Warren Buffett lives in Kent. One, it was either him or Bill Gates. He fucking might. He probably owns like, half the state. They're like two of the five richest guys in the world, whichever one of it was. There was like a story a while ago that like like they uh, were at a McDonald's and did not like they didn't have their wallet on them, and they're like, ah, uh, shit. And the the person is like, we, I, we feel like you're good for it. You can come back and pay for it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I got. I bet like those guys are pretty sad. It's like fucking Warren Buffett fucking walked his tab, dude. What the fuck? He probably came back later, bought the franchise, and just gave him races. <laughs> Here is how much money the president of your company made. Just have this. Thanks. Thanks for being chill, dude. That would be sick. Hell, we had Jadavion Clowney not remember his wallet one time, and he never came back and paid for his two sandwiches. Really? Yeah, and he's been back since then. He just you didn't just bring keep it up. a tab? That's no, we a don't solid keep move. Like, like we could have just been like, like you know, here's the other ones. But like, he was in there, what two days before he signed with whatever team he just signed with, the Panthers. Yeah, which I think he's at the right level of fame where everyone's like, that guy's got to play football, but he can still walk around and people don't just bug him for pictures all the time. Like Altuve can't do that. I feel like he doesn't no. go out to eat very often because he would just be stuck. The only place I ever hear of people seeing Altuve is at the HEB by us because he lives close by and like he'll go and do his own food shopping but I don't think he wants to be bothered with being stopped 30 times a night every time he goes out for a steak I like I like that where you just went with that because if Jose fucking Altuve cannot Instacart his shit so can everybody else because when you Instacart and you do all that shit it fucks with everybody else that does the real shopping like us like me the common man it's, Who it's never bothered have, me. Or I mean, I, I know fucking you hate it. Blocked they, by them. They always take up the whole fucking aisle in their Home Depot carts. And it's I like, don't dude, understand how it's so don't. hard. Like my fat ass can get around them because no there's problem. like ten of them, dude. There's like ten of them all throughout the store. And it's like every fucking I aisle. I never see that many. It's I long. never see, dude. I guess it, I think it's just your area. I think it's your HD is just a high Instacart too. area, probably. I walk in and I just walk in and I get my shit and I'm out in eight minutes every time I go. Hmm, Unless I'm high while shopping, yes. then it takes a while. But I see. No. The reason I do is I'm just. I would love to use Instacart. I'm too cheap to pay the delivery fees. 
I am that way. I mean, also, I feel like just dealing with that, I'm, I'm anti Instacart anyways, but like DoorDash is kind of the same thing. They just are only picking up one thing and bringing it to me. And I will pay out the ass for DoorDash where I'm like, I'm hungry. I just want food. I'll spend $45 for a sandwich that would have actually been 13. I, I stop all the time. Probably I'd say at least once a month, I'll be just fucking high or drunk on my couch late at night. And I'm like, bro, I can get Taco Bell delivered. And you get one of the, like in their app value menu meals which gives you so much food and it's like $14. Like, fuck yeah, you go to checkout and it's like $27 with delivery fees and all that shit. I'm like... And then you tip and then that's another <sighs> eight, 10. So you're paying $45. Yeah, yeah and I'm just it, like, it, no. So it, I just stop. To 45, I, 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 work my, I get all no worked up what. getting excited about a Taco Bell order and then I eat fucking cold carb-free tortillas in my fridge. And it's just not satisfying. I made the rule that I don't order if it's got a drive through I don't DoorDash it if it has a drive through because then I could just get out and go do it because of that exact reason where it's like, it doesn't matter what it is. It's still $45. Like, I feel like there's like an algorithm in DoorDash where it's like, oh, you're only at 23. They're only at 20. Let's, uh, you know what? Let's add a convenience fee here. Now let's jack this up. There's surge pricing now. Now there is an extra delivery fee in this area at this time of day, specifically right now when you hit this button. And then it's like $45-ish, good. Add a tip. Which, I always tip 10, so it's like add 10 to whatever it is, but it's always like around like 30-ish dollars when I'm when I'm checking out. For no me, it's growth what. as a person, though. Because in the past, I would have looked at that and gone, well, I'm not paying that. I'll just drive. I don't do that anymore. That's good. That's <laughs> I'm like, good. ah, Pat, you're you're fucked up. You can't just be getting Taco Cabana hammered like you're in college. Taco it's Cabana not a good move so anymore. Good, Dude, Taco C is so, so close. I, I don't know why I don't order from them more. I'm going to say a hot take. And this is a trust tree, right? We're in a trust tree? Trust tree, buddy. I, I can't promise I won't of... yell at you, but I'll accept you. We're in a tree of trust. I would a tree of trust, not a tree of trush, which is like when you're rushing trust. I don't want rushed trust. That's how divorces right? happen, man. Get it is. Too That's soon. absolutely how it, how it happens. Um, I would take Taco Cabana over Taco Bell all day. I mean, yeah, it's just the convenience of Taco Bell because there's so many more of them around. It's all, always, almost always closer than you. And you just like it's it's just easy. And that's nothing against Taco Bell. Taco Bell is great. It's probably the best fast food there is. But Taco Cabana over Taco Bell. I mean, those dude, those tortillas. Like, can I get like 30 tortillas? They're like, yeah, that's going to be 47 cents. And you can see them oh. make it in front of you. You see them like behind the thing. I'm like, whoa, look at what they're doing. Like, when you're drunk, that's the best. And also, like, not that we underage drink or anything, but if we did, like, there was always a cop there late at night and you got to kind of just play chicken with the cop. Like, does he know? Does he know? Does this guy know I'm drunk? I'm not drinking in front of him. This guy doesn't know. That was always but the best. You could like, anything. You could go to Taco Bell and get a massive chicken burrito through the drive-thru, and they're like, all right, that's $6.14. You're like, whoa. It's enough. And that's enough for like two meals in itself, but you would never know if it is, so you always get like, I'm just talking about myself here. Always get like, a taco bowl, what do they call it? Taco salad that's in the fucking shit yeah. bowl. You yeah. get both of them. You still only spend like $13. And you're like, I have enough food for three days if I wasn't a piece of shit. But I'm going to eat this in one meal I, and then finish it off as a late night snack. I feel like people weren't spending enough. So Taco Bell's brilliant marketing plan was like, what if we just made a box and we call it like the Taco Bell snack box? And everybody's like, oh, right. And like, it's the easiest thing in the world if you're drunk in a drive through and you're just like, dude, get the box. I don't have to like look at a menu or think about what I even want. Just get the box. It's got everything. It's got taco, it's got a couple tacos, it's got burritos, it's got cinnamon sticks. And you're like, fuck yeah, I'm in. Dude, the, what, there's so many too that like. And it gets you to spend a little bit more. And this just sounds really super fat. Guys, I swear to God, I don't eat a lot of Taco Bell and I really don't order online. Day. I just I, I like to get high and look at Taco Bell. Dude, the online exclusives, meal for two, two crunch wraps, two bean burritos, and the rest of it is not loading. But it's like two of something else and two of something else is twelve fifty. 
that's the thing is like they load you in with this you're like you want it delivered right all right then twelve dollars more in delivery fees you're like god right, damn it double it yeah taco bell you got me a meal for four 20 bucks feeding four people for five dollars a person you can't do that anymore yeah taco bell is they look out for the people dude and i respect that about them. um also robert um since no free ads, please go bleep out wherever we said Taco Bell or Taco Cabana right there. It's a few times, but I just, yeah, I, I'll it. trust you. I'll trust you. To do that. I, I think instead of bleeping out, I'll, I'll do like the bell <clears throat> noise. Speak oh, do me. that. And then have a bell count, actually. Mm-hmm. Ding. Ding. Yeah. Ding. Yeah. I need to find, need to find their, a way for you to do that. Of like 12 tacos. Oh, absolutely. Dude, that's I the, think like, that's the best one. You're like, I just want 14 tacos. They're like, all right, give me whatever change you have in your pocket. Sweet. Since like 2012, if it was on the menu in 2012, I've probably had it. Anything on the menu that was also on the menu in 2012, I probably had from Taco Bell. I want some taco fucking cabana so bad right now. Yeah, taco cabana fox too. Um, all right, getting back to the podcast. That came out of submarine <laughs> talk. Build Subs, sandwiches, that out tacos, you know. Obviously. Actually, there we go. I like that. I like that. That was a good segue. Um, I I've uh, I, I heard a guy come out of the bathroom today, and he was confronted by someone that was like, "Hey, your flies down," and she was being nice. She was helping him out, being like, "Yo, your flies down." But that made me realize, like, why is it shameful to have your fly down? It's not like he was hanging his dick out, and I think that we should not be ashamed of having our flies down, fellas. I think we should embrace having our flies down. And I think this needs to be the new popping a few buttons, show off a little cleavage, like dick cleavage. Not that we're showing our dicks or anything, but like crotchal cleavage. We just need to make that a thing. Let's make that ours. Not See, show here's anything. The thing, though. We're not showing anything. That's the most important part. We're not flashing anybody, but just, you know, I'm going to go half zipper tomorrow and just be like, show a little cleavage. I, I want to support you, but, there's a couple problems with it. One, and just that you're trying to make it a fashion thing. I'm instantly against it. All types of fashion, except for colorful shirts like Robert wears. It's just a fashion, a fashion is stupid. podcast today. What are you talking about? Fashion is dumb. And, and if that industry ended, I think there would be no world hunger. What if because Robert had, it's just all that money Robert, can go to other shit. What if Robert had his zipper just halfway? Like, wouldn't Robert look like he was just fucking crushing it right now? That would be fast. No, I would really be worried that Robert, like something was going on that he didn't notice. Because I feel like Robert is a guy that like, if he wears a zipper, he takes time every time to make sure everything is buttoned up and done. The other problem with this is, is with cleavage, everybody loves tits. Men love tits. Women love tits. Gay men love tits. Tits are awesome. Even big, small, whatever. Everybody loves tits. There's probably nine people in the world that penises look that think penises look attractive. Well, there's more than nine. I don't think so. They're very the only thing less attractive than a penis is the balls they're attached to. But you're not showing peen, you're showing like, oh, what's down there? And it's just making you like it draws attention to the eye right there. Kind of like when you unbutton your blouse a little bit. It's like, what's what's he got going down over there? You know? might draw a little attention that way without me doing anything. And then that also gives us the, uh, the excuse of, Hey, eyes are up here. I've always wanted to do that. Well, and, and that leads me to another point that I don't want everyone looking at my dick unless we're in private. Cause you know what? Either if I'm going to look somewhat impressive right then I'm chubbed up and I don't want you to see that I'm randomly chubbed up on a Tuesday at three 30 in the afternoon walking around at work like it's just why like what everyone's gonna make you're fucking gross the other one to that is i don't have an impressive flaccid dick I i'm not I mean, like i'm not one of these guys that maybe just walks it around more and you can see like an imprint half halfway down my fucking thigh not that guy not ashamed of being that guy i am perfectly fucking average but right so you don't need a bolt you don't need or, to be a, or don't or be a bold even, guy be a cleavage guy be a cleavage here's, guy, bro. Here, here's the other thing about it. What if you're just having one of those that you've been running around, you got a little shrinkage, or God forbid it's cold, and your zipper's down, and they can just firmly see the imprint of the head of your dick. They're going to make that guy's going to come all dick. And I'm like, no, no, no. There's so many factors going into this, ladies, that you're not even – and then you got to explain why your dick doesn't look big, and then you're the guy that's like, he's got a small fucking dick. Look at him trying to explain it in the way. No! It's an unfair no, standard like, that we have. Like, what were you looking for? Why are you looking at it then, huh? pervert and then you get to reverse like reverse sooner than 
pervert. Why are you looking down there? Also, I work in a restaurant, so it's just everybody's just ridiculing each other all the time. I think we just need to embrace this, dude. Like, instead of it being, like, why was it a thing that, like, we're like, oh, no, I'm embarrassed. My zipper is down in this picture. I don't give a fuck if my zipper is down. You know why my dick's not out? I'm fine. This country used to have shame, and we used to be a great country, okay? Shame propels society forward. Have a little secret, you know, a little something to show later on. Not, hey, look at my pussy for five ninety nine. Look at the imprint of my dick for, I don't know, 68 cents. I don't know what guys can make on OnlyFans. Probably but say, have a little bit of shame. Be, be, be ashamed of your body. That's I think that's a good thing. No, dude. We're supposed to be boss bitches, bro. Boss Otherwise, bros. then we get a fucking video of Lizzo with a shirt so low cut, you can just see the actual you between her tits because they're flapjacks. Nobody wants to see that, okay? Be a, be ashamed of your body unless you're the like top point oh one percent of people. Like if you're, if you're Brad Pitt, fucking Kate Upton, Sydney Sweeney, wear whatever the fuck you want. The problem is most people are gross. See, that is body type ist or something ist. I'm sure is what you're. No, saying it means that. I'm not blind. Maybe you hey, should. Hey, I'm be. fat. I can body shame fatties all I want. Trust me. Take it from me. It's because of us. We're only I'm fat just trying, for our own choices. I'm just trying to turn something that was a shameful thing into something that we should embrace. And it happens to everybody. And as long as you're no, just hanging shit. out there. Dude, I'm I'm not zipping up all week. I'm telling you that much. I'm not going to zip up all week. Going all cleave. All right. And next week, you can tell us about cleave. your HR meeting you had. I won't because I'll be like, that's just how I dress. It's Robert's going to be like just up. walking around the fucking offices. Like, I want to ignore Alex. He's just trying to do a thing. No, because nobody's got to be st- like, I don't understand why people notice. I've no- I don't notice people's flies, dude. It's weird. I think you do. would if they're down. You know why you notice it? it? Because like, why? It used to just pants are closed. When there's something different or out of place, your eye is drawn to it. You can just see, like, oh, it's not just fabric straight across anymore. It's like open and there's metal. Still. Uh, let's go dick cleavage guys. We're bringing that back. Um, all right. Uh, what else did I have? I had a couple more ideas. First off, it was an idea that I found out was already a thing, but bleach candles, great idea in the moment. Just so like, I don't want to clean up, but people are coming over. So I wanted to smell like I cleaned up, just light a candle. It smells like bleach already done though. So I'm not going to give Fuckers. them free ads. Yeah. That would have been a great idea. Would have been great. Um, my other idea is just cutting food with quinoa and reselling it and saying it's healthy because I learned that quinoa is healthy for you. And I feel like it's not expensive. It probably is expensive because it's healthy. It's not expensive. I don't think. I, I don't know. Look it up. I've never bought little... it and never will buy it. So, But a little bit goes a long way. My wife made some stuff with quinoa in it and she's like, yeah, it's kind of just filler. It makes you fill up faster. I was like, so we could just, it's like when they're like cutting Coke with baby powder, we're just cutting meat with quinoa. <laughs> no, it's healthy Whoa. for you. I thought you were talking about sides. Don't, don't touch the fucking meat, man. No. Unless you're making like a patty. Right. Just quinoa burger. Quinoa and beef. The quinoa burger. It would also be a great way to- beef burger because otherwise I'm going to think it's vegan and hate it. But no, see, you make the same burger. It's just a regular burger, but then you can get the quinoa burger, which also has beef in it, but it's the quinoa burger. And we just grab it from the same place. You save the money. I mean, I'd eat it. But you're making, it's like John Taffer always talks about like cutting down the costs. Like you're making your vegan burger, your your vegan burgers and your non-vegan burgers out of the same burgers. It's the exact same thing. Like, is- I'll take a vegan burger and you just grab two things, like a vegan and a regular. I'm like, cool. Done. And you're like, this tastes the exact same. I'm like, right. It's amazing, isn't it? And then that's, they uh, just think they had a quinoa burger. You think you had a regular one. You're good to go. Boom. I actually like this idea because it's, it's, it's like it's for people that are like, I'm not going vegan because that's fucking stupid. But also maybe I should eat a little bit healthier. So it's like there's this person that comes in to the restaurant and they'll get a half diet Coke, half regular Coke. You know, like that's an absolutely ridiculous thing to order, but like I get it. You're just cutting the calories of your Coca Cola. Do they do it together? So they, you know, like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Like, they're, they're like, they're, no, like one glass. They're like just fill it up half Coke, half Diet Coke. 
You're like, all right, that's fucking weird as shit. But like, I guess I respect your process. And that's what the quinoa quinoa beef burger is. It's like, no, it's a beef burger. We're just going to mix a bunch of quinoa in. So instead of it, the patty being fucking 600 calories, it'll be 300 calories. But you still get all the flavor of the beef and the fat. Exactly. That you can sell me on. You try to tell me impossible burger. It's not even meat. I'm like, get your fucking commie ass out of my restaurant. We'll call it. Hear me out. Ready for it? Beef wall? An, an impossible burger. Because of the quinoa. No, because then it still sounds like it's like impossible meat, though. Right. No, but that gets that gets people that didn't want to buy meat to still buy it. And we don't change it at all. We just give the meat and the impossible burger. And they're like, oh, but this has meat. And they're like, right. We called it the quinoa impossible burger, but still it's got meat in it. You wanted only quinoa because that's not going to be a very good burger. I think I think beef wall. It's beef the beef wall, wall burger. Because then some people will be really stupid and they'll be like, "What is that? Was it that Japanese meat that's that's really uh, beef wall, right?" And they're they're actually talking about wagyu, wagyu, but they don't know the difference. So like, yeah, I'll get the and they think they're getting really good shit. So then their head is hyped up and they love it. Wagyu beef. No, 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 no. At the, once you get to the level of wagyu, you don't fucking cut that with anything. Respect. No, me. but it's a wagyu burger. And they'll just be, oh, it's like Wagyu, probably Wagyu. It's probably made with Wagyu. They just well, you don't want anyways. You don't want to blatantly lie to the people. You just want to let the stupid people believe what they want. Okay, but we're cutting stuff with quinoa this week, guys. We're doing that. I'm actually, I'm actually down to try it. Okay, see, I'm glad. I, I kind of want to get beef that. and make a burger out of it this weekend. It's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. And we made uh, like beef and broccoli, but with quinoa. I've had it for like three days now, so it's dope. She made a lot of it too. Um, all right, what do we got next? What did I bring up? I had a website idea, more ideas for you guys. It's just pretty simple, it's essentially just a meme database because that bridge collapsing last week was not funny. Like the the event itself was not funny. It was terrible. People lost their lives. But the memes that went with it were kind of funny at times. And I feel like we are going to lose these memes in just the ether over time. And there needs to be a meme database where I go type in any historical event and all that pops up are memes that came from that historical event. So you'd be like, Francis I, Scott I, Key Bridge. Idea. And it's just like, done. Or like Alabama boat dock fight. And it's just every single meme that people posted. Some of them can be reposts. You can sift through them. But like, if you type in like all that stuff on Google, Alabama boat dock memes, like, yeah, you're going to find a couple of them but not enough. Like I want to see the whole thing. And then we can just document history as it goes on via memes, verbal trademark on that. If it's not already done, but I looked and I could not find a meme database. The know your meme is as close as I could find to it. And that's basically you type in something and it will explain what that meme originated from. Not a database though. Probably the best idea you've had in the last two years. Thanks. I think it's great to be able to just like throw keywords into there because then it like, cause history repeats itself. So eventually there's going to be more things that come up and you go, well, I can take this meme that happened in this event and just repurpose it over here and change one word. And it, it's an absolutely brilliant idea. Like what's another thing that's happened? All we do is communicate through memes. What's something that's happened in the last like five years. It's like, there was memed a lot. Um, I don't know, what's like, your name like, from uh, Walmart clocking out? Yeah, the Mason Ramsey kid. We we talked to him last week a little bit. That kid that was the yodeling Walmart kid. Mm -hmm. There were memes that came from it. I mean, uh, anything Kyle Rittenhouse on both sides, either him being the hero on one side or him crying like a little bitch on the stand on the other side. Didn't that, there was another boat that uh, got stuck in the Panama Canal, right? Suez Canal, the Suez Canal, yeah. And that those were some funny memes because it caused the backup of everything, right? Of fucking everything in the world. Yeah. It caused the chain of supply reasoning for all that shit. But yeah, we just need to be able to like type in an event. Like, I know we didn't really have memes during like 9-11, but like if we did, I'd like to see what the 9-11 memes looked like. I mean, there's plenty that came after. They did afterwards. But it's got to be like from this time or from like when memes began, you got to show us all the other shit. 
I think it's just one of my it's best. Just truly, ever. just in, a truly incredible idea. Thank you. Pat. I mean, we'll never put it together, but I would love to work for that website. Dude, All you Jesse, do is you cross reference means you're like this is a duplicate, so we put it into a file together so that it's not multiple show. Because you got to have people working full time on it, classifying means that yeah. are being sent in. Jesse is our guy that helps us with our website, passgreatpod.com, which we got to renew. So Jesse, if you want it, I need help. It'd be great. Like, what do you do for a living? Memes. Oh, you make but them? Just like, just nah, compiling them. Like, you wake up every day and it'd be like me getting up to go find gra- un- memes for you ungrateful sons of bitches. Like, that would be somebody's actual job. Also, I mean, how many times are you in your group chat or just regular texting and somebody sends you something and you're like, oh, I've got the fucking perfect meme or like and you type it in and you cannot find the meme at all on the search bar you're oh like, that's i know right. this meme exists if you it, it, do bam memes are dot com that would be a great name for it response gifts and memes i just have like a whole folder of them for oh, whenever I, I have that too i have 2320 of them in my phone Saved, ready to go. And this, and if you need anything, buddy, I got gotcha. you. I mean, I, I've got a whole folder of them too, but it's just like sometimes you know the specific GIF. Yeah, you type it in. Well, I say the GIF like, too. No, we don't have anything for this. What the fuck? Yeah, you, you know to, what pissed yeah, me off the other day was I was Google trying to. Save them. It was the first day of the Red Sox season, and they won. Which pro- good chance they don't do a lot of this year, but they look good so far. And I'm trying to send uh, a meme of from for love of the game when he's the catcher comes out to see him at the end of the game. They're going in the ninth inning. He's got a perfect game going. This goes, Billy, we don't stink right now. And I was going to send that like, ha ha, we won a game. We don't stink right now. Could not find a meme of it on the Internet. Oh, yeah. I had Some to send of them... the fucking video of it happening and clip the video. And I was like, dude, there, there's no way. No, like somehow nobody's made the fucking text over the picture of that moment from that movie yeah i no, could have immediately I, just went to, i was looking for 10 minutes could have went to the meme compiler website found it wasn't there right away not wasted 10 minutes but respect though to you because like that is when you're really truly in the trenches when like you find a video or a gif or something that you need that bad so then you go to youtube you find it you screen grab it you then have to go clip it you have That's to go exactly what i did re like redo everything you have to Scrub it to the right part. You have to make sure you edit right. And then you're like, fuck yes, Sin, done. And it took you 10 minutes to have one response, usually about a game it, that is long gone and over with. But you're like, fuck it, I don't care. There was a true detective meme that I really had to find. I had to work to find the other day. I'm going to send it to you guys because I don't want to say it on the podcast, but I was going to say it about a player. And I, it's nothing like inappropriate. I just would not want it. I mean, the best, <laughs> though, is like Matthew McConaughey, like true detective. Look up the memes. You'll find them. But it's uh, because all you ever get back from that is you get one person going, <laughs> nice. Yeah, usually not even that. <laughs> it's always not like one that. response. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I'm fucking I was saving upset this with right the player. now. I'm actually, I, in my work group chat, they're kind of being dicks right now. So I'm just going to send that right to them right now. Yeah, it plays. But it's also probably you shouldn't tweet it. Um, but I was sending it in a group chat. So that was oh, funny. I'd fucking tweet that. Any- no, you can tweet it now. Elon lets you say whatever the fuck you want. That's true. Your but, like, job you might still get fired from your doesn't. job for it. Um, so yeah, a meme database, just searching historical memes because that would be lit. Like you could just look look through wars. Like yo, dude, do you remember the World War Two? Like what was your what was like what was going on during World War Two? And kids now would just be like meme database. Ha <laughs> ha. Look, they're making fun of Stalin. That'd be funny to me. I would, I would enjoy that. I would go. It's like the history books told through just memes. Um, so that was pretty much what I had ideas wise. The last thing I really had for everybody for precom was the question: Does a Starburst count as a candy bar if it comes in the like the bar, like the bar of Starbursts? Is that a candy bar? The whole pack. No, because it has to stay as a bar once you undo the wrapping, and it falls apart once you undo the wrapping. So it's not a bar. It's shaped like a bar, but it is not a bar. But you could get a kid if you were like, I, I want to buy a candy bar. That's a candy bar. It's candy, 
that is packaged together in a bar shape. It's not a candy bar. Once you unwrap it, it falls into its own cubes. I don't know, dude. Because I think, like, it, it, you literally are buying a bar, Robert. Robert was talking. Oh no, he's busy. He's busy. We'll get him. We'll get him later. Uh, are you back? You yeah. It? No, not a candy bar. Not you don't. No. But not like, do you understand bar. the argument though? Like, it is in a bar form. You could not be in more of a bar form when you buy a pack of Starburst. Then you know it's like a pack of Starburst. Like some gum used to be packed in like cubes like that and, and like a bar shape, but you would say it's a pack of gum, not a bar of gum. That's yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Fair point. Fair point. Ooh, All right. You just got got, bitch. No, that was a solid, solid counterpoint. But I saw something was like listed under candy bars was like Starburst, and I was like, Starburst aren't candy bars. It was probably just like a, a Halloween list that they just got boxed in. Like, I'm really weird about board games when people are like, Connect Four, board game. Like, it's not a board game. There's no board. You don't get to play that. Even though I think on our mock draft of board games, I allowed it. Jenga, not a board game. A board to you, does that mean it has to be like flat on a. You have to unfold surface. the board and you have to play on the board. Because, like, Twister a... counts as a board game because it's a mat but like a mat also is a board it's is a, a board. pegboard a board to you i would allow that because it is got the word board in it okay so like that ring game yeah. i guess that's a board game yeah how about that guys i mean i don't know i don't know the ring game i'm not counting as a board game i think we have to i think i think connect four is grandfathered into board games because it was back it was around when there was only like eight games. There was like Clue, Monopoly, Checkers, Chess, Connect Four, Shoots and Ladders. So like all the, you know, it's a board game. It, uh, technically, it's a vertical board, actually, if you think about it. But like now all these other games that come out, we've gotten all the, we've got all these board games. That are, it's going to actually be like a move pieces around game for it to be a board game now. Yeah. Let me see if I can find the if I can open this folder mock draft of board games. If I can, I want to right. do, 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 do. what the the thing in Connect Four is called, like where you actually put the little tokens. I can't uh -huh. really find a name for that. Like, I wonder if that thing is called a board, and that's why Connect Four is included in board games. Nobody did take. Um, in our mock draft of board games, nobody took that. So that did play. Skateboard, Robert did take skateboard. <laughs> that plays. Nice. That was actually a really great pick. And <laughs> shuffleboard. Shuffleboard counts. <laughs> All right. Well, that was riveting. I'm sure everybody's going to love that. Um, this week, we'll be doing a mock draft of overrated things in a little bit. But um, before that, we've got plenty of other stuff. Number um, one on this podcast. Number one, just this kidding. podcast, all the way up until <laughs> that. But what do you guys got for the pre-game segment? I need to know pedicab etiquette. I don't, I think I've been in a pedicab once. Like bike guy? Yeah. You're in a little chariot thing? Mm -hmm. You pay Maybe beforehand, once, you don't ago. tip. You pay beforehand, that's including the tip. But how Maybe much you tip do you $5 pay? if it's two before. Yeah. Um, you negotiate. You do not. So that's my rule with a pedicab. Uh, I've learned that from many times at the rodeo and at like concerts, like sometimes in the woodlands, they'll do that. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think they really do it anymore at the woodlands, but um, it, or at Astros game and shit like that. Like mm -hmm. you bet how much here to here, like here to the ballpark, how much? And they'll usually give you a price, try and negotiate a little bit down. Like if it's like 40 bucks, like I'm gonna give you $20, $20. And that is the agreed upon price in my mind for $20. I would do that. Cool tip. I'm, I'm, I've, I've agreed that you will drive me for $20. That's it. What do you think, Pat? Am I crazy? Is that weird? No, I, I was, I've never done it. And I'm also the kind of person where if he said $40, I would just say, no, never mind and walk away. Didn't know it was a haggleable situation. Mm -hmm. Tried to create I don't know that if it word is. on the fly. I don't know if it is, but I think sometimes they try and upsell you. So I always try and be like, $20. Usually, like, and like, I understand if it's 40 and I'm going super far, yeah, that's fine. 
whatever, if you really are down to pay that, but like, I'm negotiating the prices. I've had people that like set, have gotten to their destination. And they're like, no, I took like, it's this much. And like they overcharged and then said you owed a lot more than somebody thought they did negotiate. You, you, you have the price up front and then maybe throw $5 in. If you want to throw a tip. Yeah, this is interesting. Like, I think if it's a one minute ride, cause I'm just thinking I went to Ashes game uh, last week and you know, there's pedicab drivers around. And from where we parked to like where we would enter, it's probably like a, a minute long ride. And I thought, who would take a cab from right here where we are to the rich park? people? And how much would it be? Because I'm thinking, you know, it's a minute long ride, maybe. I I've never I think I said I've only been on on it once. I would say like five dollars. Yeah, see, I think you like to me a pedicab thing like that for like it's like ten bucks is like what you're walking it out with like at minimum. So it's because mm -hmm. like most of those guys like are probably not going to do it for less than that. I'm sure there are people that would. I feel like it's always been twenty bucks ish when I've done it, and I don't do it all the time. It's usually just like special occasions like that. But yeah, it a hundred percent depends on the distance. If if you're making them drive like right take you a long distance, I get that being more, and I get you tipping on that. But like. Yours, you should have paid five, ten, and then just like that's that's our negotiation price. That's it. I'm not tipping you more because you took me across the street. Mm -hmm. hey, yeah, I, I, I would say that that's not a. I I don't doubt that people do tip on it, but like you're you're giving me a ride three blocks. I asked you the price. You, you told me the price. I gave you the money. End of transaction. I'm not tipping on top. You're 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 literally biking seven hundred feet. I'm not going to tip you 20%. And pulling you. Yeah, but like that's the job. Yeah. I'd also like there to be like more of a chariot style where I don't have to sit. I could stand like in the old Roman days. Oh, that no, would fuck also that. be I fun. Sit. I want to sit. Pedicabs, though. Did you just have like you a cool – or did, you didn't go in it. You just saw it. Yeah, I, I didn't go in it. I just saw it. Uh, some of them have like cool speakers and like lights on them. And you're like, man, you really souped this thing up. I've never picked a pedicab though, because of the like decorations on it. Pat, would you bring it? Yeah, I just, I, I, I just walk. Um, I'm just, this isn't really in time for not cool. And I, it, also I know I'm overreacting because it's super I'm tired of having my heart broken by the Astros already. We just keep blowing lead after lead after lead. And like, all game long, I feel good. And then we give up a two home run, two run home run in the ninth. And I'm just losing bet after bet because we can't hold on to a lead with the bullpen that we're paying $750 billion to. I'm tired money. of it. I'm tired of it. I don't want it to happen anymore. I know we're, we're everything's going to even out. Also, I kind of, I forgot until the other day, I was like, man, why hasn't Luis Garcia thrown yet? I forgot that his injury, injury was going to last into the season. So we're the Astros are only going to keep getting better. Even if we lose a pitcher, we got one of our starters coming back. But it just it's frustrating. I hate it, and I hate that I'm so already emotionally invested into a season that is so early on, and I'm going to live and die with every game. But you know, it's just, that's just because it's early in the baseball season. I miss yeah. baseball so much every year that early in the year, I freak the fuck out about everything. I'm still and in hockey I'm mode. I'm gonna give myself a heart attack. Still in hockey mode, but baseball season's been interesting. I'm kind of today. like falling out of hockey mode. Like I love hockey, but once baseball got close, it's been pretty much just the Bruins for me and hockey, and that, which I hate because also it's coincided with me just going on a bad betting streak where I've just been losing all the time for like a month and a half now. So like. I'm not throwing bets across the board at every hockey game, so I'm not watching all of them anymore. It's just I need everything to change. I, I had three bets that should have hit last night. Two of them fucking shit the bet in the end. Not happy about it. You should build a submarine about it. I should. That was it. I, that dude, I looked better. at the website. I was, I was, if they had put, because it's that one that said all training we give you all the training and everything you click on careers and it goes, all right, send us some shit. No, 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 no. You tell me, you tell me what your salary ranges are. And then I'll see if I want to apply. Teach Otherwise, I'm not me how to weld. 
And then I hate I'll that one. The, they don't they don't put any fucking salary ranges on the website. Like fuck you. I'm gonna stay in my job forever. Then you dumb bitch. You could have had all this. You had could have had all this at your company, making it fun. <laughs> So many companies have been saved for me by just not listing their Clearly. salary pages. <laughs> Clearly. Um, all right, let's move on to the Comeback Kids segment. We tell you guys what's been back in the news. Then we'll get to our mock draft of overrated things. Before we do that, let's tell you that the Comeback Kids segment is brought to you by littleemshop.com. Littleemshop.com, the best air fresheners on the planet go over there check them out you can get the fresh to death scent the little ice scent and the miami beach scent i prefer the fresh to death but i can't hate on either of the other two i do have a little ice hanging in my car um but go over to little m shop.com little em shop.com load up on some awesome air fresheners some cool customizable keychains they also have some already made keychains that aren't super customizable but you'll you'll just like it anyways if you want one that just says bad driver in the barbie font that's hilarious you want a hellfire club one we got that an f the patriarchy one a getaway car one and then the anti-hero or maybe maybe you're the anti-hero huh are you the problem it's you then get one of those uh or just customize one it's a great gift idea maybe you know you're you're doing the bachelor bachelorette parties you want to ask people to be in your wedding give them a little keychain with it and then they'll always remember that and you'll look cool like you got custom stuff and free shipping on orders of ten dollars or more at littlemshop.com you're gonna use our promo code ptg69 at checkout and you get 10 percent off your order so you get ten dollars off and free ship or 10 percent off and free shipping on orders of ten dollars or more at littlemshop.com when you get something from little m shop let them know you're supporting the people supporting the podcast they're at little em tweets on twitter and at little em shop on instagram let them know you're supporting the people supporting the podcast littlemshop.com the official sponsor of the comeback kid segment It's the comeback kid, the comeback kid of the week, the comeback kid of the week, bitch. All right, this might be a quick segment, but baseball is our first comeback kid of the week. Um, I noticed we were talking about injuries a little bit earlier before we started the segment. Robert, we, I guess baseball season didn't officially start before uh we finished recording our last episode don't forget about the jacob de grom injury updates this year whenever jacob de grom is out with injuries you have to let us know each week still out with injury but still already the season just started season just started i heard a take today where someone was saying with jacob de grom it's actually kind of a positive that you don't have to worry about pitch counts with him because you know you're only going to get so much out of the season from him so you don't have to worry about tearing down. You just let him go. And then hopefully he's there in the postseason. I was like, but that's the whole fucking thing is he's not ever there. You you go, okay, just let him go. And he goes for two weeks and then his season is over. He's the Ben Simmons of baseball, except he's actually, when he's healthy, he's the best pitcher in baseball. And Ben Simmons is at ben his Simmons best. Up, though. Nowhere fucking close. Does he though? He doesn't play, but he suits up. I wasn't even aware that he showed up to the games. Yeah, he's not, but, uh, he's not featured very often. But yeah, Jay DeGrom. Yeah, everyone, everyone's like, dude, the Rangers, man, they're so good, and they're going to get DeGrom back for nine days. You're going to get two starts out of him, and then you're going to fucking complain. He'll be your Saquon Barkley, but less. Saquon played man, way more than him. Right. Ben Simmons said, is really the less. closest... <laughs> Ben Simmons really is the closest thing. You're like he's going to be out there, just not for long. Fuck the Rangers, though. And also, a Dallas Garcia steroid watch. Did we see that? Are we all just going to pretend that he's not still on steroids? Because I'm pretty sure he looks like Barry Bonds. His head is you unor- is his g- ginormous, huge. You I saw a side by side of of him from his like I think it was his rookie year, and yeah, it's been what like six years. So there's enough time to beef. But the way my friend put it in the group chat today was he is at in that time frame, you can get to the peak of nat of what the body can do naturally. Or get to the edge of the peak, whatever the fuck he said. I'm like, yeah. 
But there's no, that's the point. He's not doing it naturally. You think everything went perfectly for him while playing baseball for long stretches of time in the offseason and enjoying himself. And he got to the peak of what you can do naturally? No! He's definitely yeah, taking right. shit. They don't want to do anything about it because, like, you know, you can only randomly drug test players. Okay, we say that all the time, but you know the league will slip somebody that they want to get drug tested in there. Yeah, just like the league would maybe cover up for their best player that's in a whole gambling investigation and we're just going to pretend, oh, what gambling investigation? Let's not talk about that. Hey, hey, that's a pending event. We can't talk about it. Can't talk about that anymore. Bad look, MLB. This is blood yeah, on your really- hands, Manfred. And that's going to take forever because it's like, well, we have to let the legal process play out. And he's like, he stole from me. There is zero documentation from any law enforcement of who is handling that he was stolen from. He just says, I've, I have I forward it to authorities. What authorities? The FBI, the local police? Who was handling it? Zero charges have been pressed. Japanese authorities, maybe? They're not, they're not handling it, handing it over because they know it's a fucking lie. And if they hand it over to the authorities going, he stole from me, then they, he can get hit also for a wrongful suit. But no and- reason to just let them keep playing. Shohei can just be like, oh, they fired my interpreter. I can't read these. Which really fucks up the whole investigation when the guy can just be like, I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. It's almost the perfect crime, really. Like, fuck the Dodgers, but like, almost the perfect crime if he gets away with this. Bad gambler, but like, he gambled on this one and he came out on top if he does get away with this, in fact. I mean, don't let him get away with it because it's Major League Baseball and they're pieces of fucking shit. And Jose Rob Altuve. A goddamn fraud. Oh, he'd be he would be dead. They would have killed Jose Altuve. He would have been dead already. Funny. She's on the other foot. Hmm. Makes you think. Baseball's back. And then also my favorite thing about the first week of baseball season is on pace guy. So that's also back. I loved being that guy the first week of the year. Uh first like two games. I was like, hey, Yankees never gonna lose a game. And then the guy that hits the home run on open day, 162 home runs on average, guys, on pace. (laughs) 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 Always crushes. And then, like, when they show, like, a pitcher, they were talking about, um, was the Yamamoto, the Dodgers guy that Mm -hmm. got shelled the first week? They were like, yeah, well, uh, his his ERA ballooned up. It's like, yeah, after one start, yeah, it's going to balloon up. That's all of the information they have to go off of. He has, like, 100 ERA. Yeah, it's not great. It's probably going to go down, I would imagine. It was it the Rockies guy that pitched. Or I think he threw like point two and had a one thirty six ERA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's pretty Because <laughs> they gave up fourteen runs in the fifth inning. That's always a great one. Like the high ERAs are fun. On pace mm-hmm. guy, it's played out. But we like this dude has a hundred and thirty six ERA. I don't care what the time frame is on that. That's hilarious every time. Have you yeah. guys seen like the thing that's supposedly going around for? Um... Anthony Rendon, like Angels fans, I think their their home opener is this coming Friday. And they're like saying, oh, we got to make sure we give Anthony Rendon a standing ovation, his first plate appearance, to show him that we still support him and stuff. Because he is 0 for 19. He is 0 for 19 uh, to start the year. You know, it just hasn't started for him yet. Mm-hmm. It's just another example of the fucking angels being the worst. I think you can make a case that they're a worst run franchise in the A's. Nah. Because you saw they 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 signed Matt Mike Trout to the massive biggest contract in the history of baseball. Then they luck into getting Shohei Otani. Well, I guess you know luck they paid enough to be able to get his rights to then pay him. That let him or and then brought in Rendon on the back half of his career on a major contract, which everything he said since signing that shows that he really doesn't like baseball is not his priority, which if I'm paying you fucking, what is his contract? $300 million. It better be your number one fucking priority. This gambling. But then they let show. Hey, walk. They're wasting. Trout's been in the league. What? 12 years. One postseason series. So now you're paying two guys. One trout, who is a first ballot hall of famer. No question. Slam dunk. And a guy that doesn't give a fuck about baseball, and you let the most dynamic player in the history of baseball walk away, and you can't get any wins together. The A is just like we're going to suck on purpose so we can try and move. 
Yeah. That at least is a plan. The Angels have no fucking plan. They're the worst run franchise probably in all of sports. But you get a little bit of excitement. Or maybe stupid. If you're the if you're the Angels, if you you just have no feeling of anything if you're the A's because it's just nothing, and you get the like, oh, we got a big signing. Okay, cool. Oh, lost him again. Like you get that. It's gonna suck for the Angels though, because Mike Mike Trout hit a ball the other day, four hundred and seventy three feet. You're like, that's so exciting, and then you remember out of a stadium. It's all for nothing. It's all for nothing because it doesn't matter because we're the fucking angels. We can't do shit. They are four and two. So maybe they're hot. Maybe Shohei was holding them back, dare we say? Dare we say? Yeah, maybe. You know what? It could be that all the players on the team were so worried about performing well that they couldn't perform well because they knew Shohei was betting on it and they didn't want to let him down. So he would leave and it got in their head. I think you might be onto something there. Yeah, how are the Di- uh, Dodgers six and two? Never mind. Well, four, four and two. They would have. They got rained out games. It looks like maybe, right? That's why they would have less games. I don't. I don't fucking know. But baseball's back, and that's fun. I do enjoy day games because you get the random day game. Where you're like, oh, baseball on another day. That's fun. The the one thing I hate, and I'm hearing this take now because we got we have to celebrate the no no, Renell Blanco just going out and shoving it. Well, he it's his eighth start of his career. He'd never gone more than six innings. Mm-hmm. Just start really started throwing the changeup this offseason and then just absolutely dominated a major league lineup with the changeup. Throws a no hitter. Absolutely beautiful performance. And I'm hearing people online being like, dude, I'm fucking tired of no nos. They happen all the time now. Shut your fucking mouth. If you're tired of no hitters, you have absolutely no concept of how difficult they are. They do happen a lot. To be, and he had, so he was one walk. Which was the opening? George he had, Springer he walked. Oh no, that's right. He Springer twice. I forgot he did walk him later in the game. He walked Springer, the first batter of the game. Then got I think twenty four consecutive outs. Walked Springer again, and then got the final three. It's an absolutely amazing pitching performance. It's one of the hardest things to do in all sports, and people don't throw enough shine on it. People hate on it because like oh, it's the fucking Astros. Yeah. Uh, Four, I think, in our over the time of our last four no hitters, no other team has or all of baseball combined has three. So I'm bored. Uh, we're fucking it. better than you. Suck dicks, everybody. Hey, I we're can just buy gonna 50, shove 50 all tickets online. Season. I can buy Yankees 50 50 tickets right now. That is bad news. Oh, the dude, the Bruins pimp the shit out of theirs every game. Like, it's up to six hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, baseball's back. No nos are back. The Astros are gonna find their fucking stride. The bullpen is gonna figure it the fuck out. We're gonna start getting nine runs a game because our offense is ridiculous. We're gonna be back in the ALCS bucks. this year. It's a twenty bucks on. <laughs> also, this is my favorite time of the year when baseball's like just starting to get going, and me and Alex are doing the podcast. But also, if you watch live, we're just constantly looking off to the side, watching baseball games at the same time. Because we're degenerate gamblers and we have money on it. Dude, the pot's 50K, bro. We're going to be so fucking rich. I just bought... It's totally worth it. Totally worth it. 10 whole tickets. No, no, 20 tickets. Excuse me. Fuck yeah. Let's go. So... What if I win 25K while we're doing the podcast? That'd be so sick. I don't think they do the drawing during the game, do they? At the end of it, we're in the... Oh, actually, yeah, yeah that makes sense because if people have the tickets in game, they but you can still win it if I can do. If I can, if I can win, anybody. Here's can the thing, anywhere. though: don't make a large purchase if you win it because you know that money's going to be taxed in New York. And if you won fifty thousand dollars, here's nineteen dollars that you win after taxes. But they're playing in Arizona, so maybe it's Arizona taxes. But it's I run through the Yankee. I'm just right, telling you, be careful. The Yankees. God they just do fifty fifty raffles. Dog. They do 50-50 raffles on all of them. Oh, but they have oh, early bird pricing. I can get I can get an extra 50 tickets for I'm not, dude, I'm telling I'm you, not doing, the, I'm the not Bruins doing, have doing, been wanting run all year. And I'm pretty sure nobody's won it all year. So it's up to like six hundred thousand dollars. And every game I watch, like you can buy your tickets online. And I'm like, <laughs> wait, nobody's Fuck. won it. Yeah, because they have like, to they're or, with or, it every night. Or, Hold on, I think no. What it is is they're doing a season long one. That's what it is. 
they're doing a season long 50 50 raffles you could buy them like at every game and just continue without the season so the money keeps climbing that makes more sense for it yeah the 50 50 raffle if you don't know what we're talking about it's you put all the money into a pot half of the money goes to the charity and the winner of the raffle gets the other half of the money so fifty thousand dollars would be fucking sick to split and give half to charity. Once again, now, I can say I gamblers. Can I'm just I'm charitable guy, charitable guy. Um, baseball's like back though. Living in New York though. Well, why do they let me pay money? From what I I, I have Chris that Chris lives in New York. I'll just bet Chris. You just won twenty five k. Here you go. I'm gonna text him. Yeah. No, I'm not because it's gonna make it seem like he I won. I'm gonna just be honest. You don't. You can't leave a paperwork of collusion, dude. You got to get on WhatsApp if you're gonna communicate about this. Allegedly. Yeah. Not that this has actually happened. This has all been a well, bit. This is definitely we're totally joking. Totally joking. Anybody listening to the IRS? I paid taxes. I did pay taxes. First time in four years. Paid taxes, guys. I didn't get very much back. I don't like it. Um, moving on, though. Oh. Moving on. Beyonce. Comeback kid this week because Cowboy Carter. <laughs> She's still in the hearts of America. Greatest country artist of all time, Pat. I don't know if you listened, but like whoever you like sucks because Beyonce is the best country artist ever. That's amazing. This ain't Texas. I said Texas. Hold so you know it's a country song. Do not hate on Beyonce. I ain't part of the Bay Hive. Beehive, whatever the fuck you call them. He has Willie Nelson in one of them. Also interesting that she'd be so willing to put out an album, Lemonade, just shitting all over her husband. But the second she needs a country album, she's like, I'm going to use his last name because I'm a car- cowboy Carter. That's also her last name. Is it? Did she take his last name? I think so with the name of the album, I would imagine. Or is she just doing it for marketing? Or is she secretly married she's to little Wayne? Chill. Wayne is also Carter. Wayne would never. He would never put out a song and call it country when it's not. He came out with a rock album. Yeah, he did. I'm the prime queen, prime queen. I'm playing guitar on it, very basically. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like two chords. He's like, you look like a guy that just went to a guitar lesson, and this is what your your dad's like. Show me what you learned, buddy. And you're like, din 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 din. That's great. I love it. Go with it. Prime queen. Little Wayne prom queen. I promise you won't be disappointed. Prom a very funny song, but uh, but, yeah, I, I don't Beyonce, know. I heard that she did a song with Miley okay. on here. She did, that was the best one. Two most wanted. Um, she did a cover of Jolene that was not. I don't even want to listen to that one. Dolly did it great, Miley perfected it. There's nothing else to do with it. Miley did do it. Um, Miley's got, yeah. I honestly. To do a, a a song with Miley on the album and then cover Jolene, fucking disrespectful. Well, she goes Dolly P into Jolene. So it's like back to back. Wait, she's got a song called Dolly P? With Dolly P. Okay, I'll listen to that one because it's got Dolly. And Willie Nelson. I, I don't know. See, I, I haven't listened to shit of it. But like after Obviously. hearing just the clips of this ain't takes and everyone's like, it's a country album. I'm like, well, that's not even a country song. She just said a Southern state. Spit it a song I called eat, spaghetti on it. That was also. I eat crawfish. That doesn't make it a fucking Cajun song. It ain't Texas. It ain't hold them. Is it like. I bet there's not yeah, one I mean, steel guitar in that whole fucking album. Probably. But if we had to put like the top three country albums of all time, top three country albums of all time, it's, I'm not going to say Beyonce's one. I'm not going to say she's two. She's, I would put it at three and then Lil Nas X's first two albums and then Beyonce. And those are the three greatest country albums of all time. I don't Reed even Robert. think Lil Nas X says his, uh, he had that one song that was country. He never said his albums were country. Once you're country, you're always country. You can't, you can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy. So I always say, I do hear you always say that. I tell Robert that almost every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's why I'm telling you. If that. there's I one say, thing you're known know. for, it is saying that. It's sayings that I say all the time. I don't and then know. reminding just, you that I said those sayings. 
it's like my brain is caught between the thing where I know it's dumb <laughs> to be 33 and care this much about a genre of music and gatekeeping it. And then the other part of my brain is like, <laughs> fuck it. You love hating things and hating people and just getting angry. Getting angry makes me feel better. And I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm torn between these places where like, at some point in your life, you're going to have to fucking grow up. And I'm going to be like, well, it ain't today. So fuck Beyonce. Fuck this entire fucking album. She doesn't no, rep Houston. Those aren't the lyrics. It's it ain't Texas. Not yeah. it ain't today. It's just, ain't hold them. I'm, I'm Beyonce. I haven't seen you wear a fucking Astros jersey in your life. Get the fuck out of here, Beyonce. Your husband wears Yankee shit all the time. Can't you can't you should, honestly they should have divorced. If you're from Houston, you should be a Nationals fan. Your husband's a Yankees fan. Never Once this shit love. happened. Yeah, guess not. No, not really. <laughs> Her husband literally made the Yankee hat more famous than a Yankee can. He said that. He makes great gifts. I gotta give him that. Yeah. He knows what the hard knock life is for. Is about to. Yeah. I just, I, I just, I just so hate Cowboy that. Be like, I'm country now. No, you're not. You dress like a fucking prostitute in a whorehouse with a cowboy hat on. That's not country. Whoa! Do not say that about the queen. I'm do not I, say I, that in the queen. I'm sorry. You have you ever seen old western videos when they go to the brothel at the end of the fucking saloon? No. They're dressed like her. It's it's a little piece of cloth that covers just your pussy. And then that goes up into like a onesie that kind of like covers your tits, but there's gaps all over it. That's what whores wore in the old west. Maybe she's taking it back. Like I'm taking back the leaving your zipper down, dude. Come on, man. We're not about pushing people down. We're about raising people up. You know what it is? This it's cultural appropriation. Is. It's cultural appropriation. That's what it is. There we go. Actually, you know what? If her and Morgan Wallen got together on a song where they both said the N-word, I think that would really blend it together. I mean, that's what the... I, I've never heard her do it, but he famously does it. So you really could blend the the genres together on that one. Morgan's like, Beyonce, hey, I got a few lyrics. I wrote into the... Whoa, 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 I was thinking I could maybe cover your husband's song, The Story of OJ. <laughs> you know, what if we, me, and you Homie, did a homies in paradise. version of, yeah, of, uh, of that song your husband did about Paris? What if we did a country version of that? You know, with his good buddy Kanye West. <laughs> there is a Paris, Texas, and I have a mullet, so it'll be country. I have a mullet, huh? Think about it. I'm just saying that would break the internet maybe actually wouldn't so i don't yeah, give a fuck about morgan country. wallen he is so like, he's so famous i feel like that i am like i am just not in any of the circles that morgan wallen does stuff he's got a great people, voice nobody's ever disputed that he's just a piece of shit that doesn't sing actual country music <laughs> how many times so. does this guy have to publicly get caught saying the n-word before we get rid of him a couple more that's what i want to know a couple more. he's been twice um all right what we got next is Ellip eclipses Ooh. i almost said ellipses that's, ellipses, that's, ellipses also grammar. also back this week ellipses is we'll go off about ellipses pat i i know they are a part of grammar <laughs> fucking couldn't tell you what they are anymore i i know okay so let, let's try and figure this out organically the semicolon is the dot the comma Right. The uh, what is it when it's just the two dots when you do like movie title dot dot part two like what is the dot dot called again? Is that is that ellipses? I don't know what that one is either. Also, I don't know what the what is the one where it'll be like past the gravy and then we'll put it's like a you could just do it with a lowercase l also, but then it'll have like the title. It'll be like the name line this. What is that called? The, you, there's got to be a name for it, but I was never taught that one. It's Maybe that's just a divider. There is a key for it? The straight up yeah. and down? I don't think so. There's like this key. Oh my God, it is there. Yeah. Yeah. I've, Pretty bro, crazy stuff. I've been lo looking at keyboards for 
let's say 27 years. Let's say I, the first time I started looking at keyboards, I was six. Let's just put it at that. 27 years, I've never noticed that that symbol on the keyboard. What That's is- insane. Backslash, and then what's the other one? That's not what I want. Robert, do you know what the ellipses is? We're trying to organically figure this out on our own, but I don't think we're going to get there. We're not. What do you mean with the ellipses is? Like an ellipses. It's like it's a grammar like notation type thing. It's I'm Googling it now so we don't. Right? No, simple. but I'm saying like, what does it look like? I don't think it's grammar. I think it's just a circle. Wait, is it the three dots? Yeah, ellipses is three dots. Then why the fuck didn't you say that? Don't go, oh, yeah. It's three dots. We were asking you what it was. And you're like, it's an ellipsis. Oh, yeah, don't, I, I, thought don't, you, I thought you already knew. Don't gaslight. No. I felt like I was being gaslighting me so hard right now. I was like, what's ellipses? <laughs> like the simple. Like the, the, yeah, the, no, okay. Ellipses is the three dots. Yeah. No, Al, Robert, we're morons, okay? You well, can't ever put more credit on us than is due. And trust me, none of it is ever due. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, so not ellipses, but eclipses are back. I kind of went off on this a couple of weeks ago because I heard somebody talk about how they booked a hotel room somewhere for this eclipse coming up this weekend or Monday. It's on a Monday, dude. What kind of fucking eclipse shows up on a work day? Get the fuck over yourself, sun or moon or whatever it is. It's having to do this. Like we're gonna like we're gonna see another one probably soon. There's all this shit about glasses. I did have a glasses idea for the eclipse. So um, I saw a thing out there today about people selling fake eclipse glasses. And there's only one real way to tell when an eclipse glass is fake. And that's during the eclipse. So I went online and I found 3D movie glasses. And you can get a pack of 50 for $9 on Amazon. We get those bad boys shipped in here. And you just Sharpie over the red and the blue. You can't see through it. And then, oh, no, I burned my eyes. Oh, shit, that sucks. You can't fucking find me. You have no eyes. You can't see. You going to point me out in a lineup? Which guy is it? I don't know. I can't see him. Huh. Perfect crime. So you, just, so you just want to do crimes? Well, really, we buy the box of 50 for 9 bucks. We just Sharpie over all the red and blue, sell them for 5 bucks a pop. We make our money back easily. We're rich. We don't care. That is true. The rich don't care. The rich don't Granted, care. I'm poor That's how and we I don't care rich. either. So this is, I'm already poor and I don't care. So I actually think this is a perfect You'd be a ri- place great for rich me guy. to be in. I would be a phenomenal rich guy, dude. Yeah. Like I would just make sure my boys were okay and help nobody else. Okay. So when like I, I would get win... my, my friends and my family out of crimes and let people starve. Yeah, dude, I'd be a great rich guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be really good if I just had a lot of money. I would really like that. I would be awesome at having money, guys. I'd be fun with it. Like I wouldn't like I really I wouldn't I wouldn't help people, but I would randomly go to a sports bar on like a Tuesday afternoon and just pay for every drink that's currently on a tap. And that's charity. Yeah. You know, I you do have little to be things. disease. I do charity my way. Dude. Can you give $50,000 to cancer? No, I paid $50,000 worth of bar tabs last night. There are a lot of really happy people. All right. When I win this 50 50 raffle today, I'm going to invest all of it in 3D glasses and then we'll double that. Like 25K in 3D glasses. You guys just got to come over and sharpie over some stuff and I'll give you guys a cut. But like, we can turn 25K into like 75K. Well, I'll Sharpie all day. I'm great at meaning labor. Yeah. I mean, we can just watch games all day. You just got to sit there and constantly be fucking yeah, scratching just... back and forth. I can do that all day, dude. Can we get, if we cut the bottom out of a Sharpie, could like with the liquid just pour out? Cause we could just buy paint rollers and just start doing that. Like it doesn't fucking matter what the rest of the glasses look like as long as you can fold them and put them on. Who gives a shit if it's got black Sharpie paint on it? Just dip the whole thing. Just buckets of paint. And yeah, dip them all that's even better. It's e- way easier. Yeah. They're black glasses. See, done. I, see, I'm, an, I'm an idea guy. It's what I do. Yeah. Um, I feel like they're... Yeah, we can make a lot of money doing this. So let's work on that. Don't make plans this weekend. 
we will uh be we're, we're dipping glasses and then we're selling them Sunday somewhere. Hell yeah. If you'd like any glasses, don't actually if you're listening to this, if any of your friends that you don't like that much would like glasses, let us know. Yeah, if you have any coworkers that you're like, I wish that fucker couldn't see, send them our way. If you know any triplets that you would also like to dress up as the three blind mice later on this year, um, let us know. We can help you. You know anybody that's moved here from California? Send them our way. I know people from California. They're nice. You know, at some point, you're just going to be principled about it. (laughs) Just because you're from there, we're not doing this. Yeah, you're from here. Fuck you. All right. Um, that's it. I think eclipses are overrated. So we're going to do a mock draft of things that are overrated. Now, this is up for debate. So we're just going to draft them and then we're going to let you guys decide who was right and wrong. There's Verdugo doing something. Look at that guy. I hate his face so much now. I want to hate him. I hated him forever. He looks so, he looks like such a douche. The Yankees guy. have a long history of taking players from the Red Sox and the Red Sox like, if you've played for the Yankees, you just can't play for the Red Sox. But the Yankees are like, oh, a Red Sox free agent? We're going to take him just to hurt their fans. Yeah, I like that move. That's a Which cool I kind of respect, but I fucking hate him. The Eagles do that to the Giants, but fuck them. All the Giants to go there. It, it really is a, a one-way highway going from Red Sox to Yankees. You can't go Yankees to Red Sox. Because people from Boston, we don't. Or I can't say yeah, we. Yeah, you can. Not me. But people from Massachusetts, not the sin of being a Yankee. What's the pitcher for the Rangers? Was the pitcher Nate Nate Evaldi, Yankee first? He was a Yankee. Started with Yankee farm system, but he never played for the big club. Yeah, he did. He did. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, there's one. So, so I'm there's one there's more than. I never knew about that. I honestly had no idea he ever played for the Yankees. And then, yeah, we got Jeter Downs that used to play on the Red Sox. The Red Sox also got, uh, it was a shortstop. I can't remember. No, I don't know. I'm not going to go down this. We're not going to go down that list. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll do a mock draft of guys that played on the Yankees and the Red Sox. But our mock draft of overrated things, it's week seven of 10 in the mock draft season up until the NFL draft week. Last week, we did the mock draft of houses, and I had 53% of the vote. Robert had 32% of the vote coming up in second place. And Pat, last place again, 15%. So on the season, Robert and I both have three wins apiece, and Pat has none. This week, we will be doing the same thing we do every week, where we draft in the reverse order order of last week's finish so we're gonna do a snake draft it's gonna go pat robert me me robert pat pat robert me me robert pat that is how our draft will go the mock draft of hold on let me finish clearing out last week's mock draft stuff but the mock draft of overrated things pat what you got um i don't think this is gonna be shocking for anyone the fact that I'm picking it or that I think it's the number one overall one, one pick. I'm just taking life. Life, life is, is so overrated. fucking overrated. God, it yeah. sucks. It just like just sucks. There's game? bills and then you die. Or... Nope. Just oh, life board being game. alive. We got a board game. I'm going to put. No, we're not, we're, remember, we're, saving, we're saving board games. We already did board games. We just doesn't matter. That. That'll probably help my fucking score, but no, I'm just saying life. I'm going to put the sucks. game it's as overrated. the graphic though. Yeah. It's like, life is so precious. No, it's fucking not. Life cereal. It fucking sucks. <laughs> Robert, what you so got? Life, one one pick. You know, I it would be funny if you went all life for this one. So like next round you pick like lifesavers. And then the oh, cereal life lifeguards. Uh, mm-hmm. Everything life. Um I'll go I'll go the royal family. Ooh, good. Good. I think they're very overrated. <laughs> It is, but I think it's really just like British people and like American girls. They're like, I could be a princess one day. I think everyone else is just like, dude, fuck the royal family. <laughs> um, I had growing up, but I feel like growing up is life, so I can't use that. Um, 
I'm just gonna say politics. Politics are overrated. I don't give a fuck. Are they overrated? Yeah, I think everyone overrated. fucking hates politics and politics. Politics are overrated, are dude. Pro- People get rated. really into it. Talking about they get them, into overrated. it, but everyone hates it. But it's yeah. most of our TV programming today. That's true. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. It's not I'm bad. gonna go politics, and then I'm gonna go Marvel movies. Okay. Right. I would say only guess, the yeah. recent ones, and I yeah. get all of them. I'm gonna go with. I'll go with college. Ooh. College is overrated. College overrated. Mm-hmm. Send that degree back, Robert. In some ways, yes. In some here. ways, no. It's. I think it's more unnecessary than overrated at this point. It's dumb. Um. All right, here's where I'm going to start pissing people off. Good. Avocado. All right. Avocado is the most overrated fucking thing in food. It's not good by itself. Like, if you sprinkle salt on it, it's good. It's good, like, they say good fats. So, like, if you're on a keto diet, it's good for you. Dude, avocado by itself fucking blows, and their marketing strategy needs to be studied by every company on the planet because it's just not that good. (laughs) It's not I flavorful. It's crap. To just pop them up, I cut one in half and just eat it like a snack. You know what's you know what made avocado what it is today? Guacamole. Guacamole, fantastic. Avocado by itself, ass. All right. Uh my third pick. I got a lot to go from here. Um I will go clubs. Clubs, clubs are so overrated. People are like, I want to go. I'll go to the club. Clubs suck ass, dude. It's getting to the point where a lot of just popular bars suck ass, but clubs in general, they fucking blow. The drinks are overpriced. You can't hear anything. Oh, I'm going to spend $600 on a bottle of Cheetos so they'll bring out sparklers say, and I look at poor. No, you're I had a bottle fucking service. douchebag. Bottle service is really shitty. Really stupid. But just, uh, I'll tell you, everything all. about clubs, every last bit about clubs, not just bottle service, all of it, it all sucks. All right. All right, so back to Back me. to you, Bobby. I'm going to go, I'm going to go LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I'm going LinkedIn. LinkedIn is overrated. Yeah, I don't really ever understand it. I had to make one for college. Haven't touched it since then. I feel like it's only like if you work in like finance or like in New York City, then LinkedIn is good. It makes connections. You're just like a regular person doing a job. It's the most unimportant thing ever. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Um, That's all. Um, I'm going to go Disney World. Disney World is overrated. Everybody has to like spend a fortune and then they go and then they just bitch about how much the lines were or how much more money they had to spend and your kids go there and they're hungry and they're tired and they don't want to stand in line so they're grouchy and they cry and it just is i've heard so many just unpleasant stories of disney world i'm gonna say disney world's overrated nobody has fun at disney world except for children and disney adults who we all agree there's something fucked up with their brain but it does have a Star World or Star Wars like world land, whatever you want to call it. Now that's pretty fucking sick. So I've heard, overrated. I've heard that's really the only part of Disney that lives up to it. Like for like regular adults going there, it's amazing. But yeah, no, it's good one. Disney World sucks ass. And I also think I'm torn. I'm torn. If I could take Disney World back just to take these two, I would, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna go into. I think backing into parking spaces is overrated. People make it seem like it is the end all be all of anything. Like I'll back into my spots. Like, no, you're an asshole that makes the guy behind you in a parking lot, then have to hit reverse or you fucking rear end him with your fucking trailer hitch because you're a douchebag that has to back out. My job says I have to. If your job says you have to, that's different. The, to choose to just back in people act like it's such a flex. It's not that much of a flex. You got back in or back out at some point. Who cares? Who's, who's flexing that they can back into a park. That's just a basic, like when that's like driving. that's there's guys that like that's their thing they they're, they always back into the fucking spot dude and it's not that cool you think it's cooler than it is it ain't cool i back in a lot but it's just normally because i know i'm gonna have to go run an errand and then i 
can just pull right out right out. i don't know i don't i've never met anyone who brags about that that's that's a wild thing to brag about weird it's a that. weird thing people back into parking spots you could have said parallel parking i think it would have been better than that i don't think anybody think that's cool people brag about that more than reversing into a parking spot robert what you got i think this only applies this year because they won last year. I'm going to go with the Rangers. They are overrated, the baseball team. All right. I don't know about that. They're still a really good team. Overrated. You support overrated. guys. You support All right. Guys? Agree. Yeah. Agree. They're overrated. Agree. Oh, hey, what did that city do? Did they kill JFK? Was it them that killed JFK? That's crazy. You know what's crazy is I'm getting to my final pick here, and you guys didn't took a single thing off of my list. What was a pretty I mean, like, open to interpretation? <laughs> but you'd think there would have been a little overlap here. But also, you did say I beat you, or you had similar ones. You took clubbing off of mine, Pat. But no, you took bottle service from that one. Yeah. Um, this is where it gets. I mean, I'll put, it's just it's just Starbucks. It's so fucking overrated. <laughs> it's not good coffee. Last time I went to Starbucks and I bought a black coffee because that's all I want. I wanted a black coffee and I took a sip of it and I was like, this tastes like fucking shit. If you can't make a black coffee, nothing else you do after that matters. I if the coffee say, itself tastes like ass, then you suck. I was going to say just coffee, but I thought I might lose people there. But Starbucks is good. See so your pan. Starbucks is solid. Starbucks is good. It's his list, Pat. <laughs> you know, and but it's, as far as like, there, there's, I'd go to so many other places before I went to Starbucks for coffee. It's just not good. Okay, solid. All right, let's get to let's get to some honorable mentions. Um, well, let's recap let's the re- list first. Yeah, yeah. We re- before we do that, we recap with uh, with our picks. Pat had life, avocados, clubs, and Starbucks. Robert had the Royal Family, College, LinkedIn, and the Texas Rangers. I had politics, Marvel movies, Disney World, and backing into parking spaces. Um, the other thing I was trying to pick was deviled eggs. I thought deviled eggs was going to hurt me, but deviled eggs are incredibly overrated and stupid. Um, I had about 10 deviled eggs this weekend. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I just can't oh, them. They're gross. so good. Jeeps. There's another one I had, astrology, fun. country music, Beyonce. The Cowboys slash Dak Prescott. Every year, the Cowboys this our year. You suck every year. Same thing with Dak. He is a top 14 quarterback. He's really a middle-of-the-road quarterback that you guys pay like top end. He sucks. I had Someone s- else's firework videos. I had mm. Stanley Cups. The <laughs> the drinks, not the trophy. Yeah. Um, mm. Parades, Airbnb. See, I had parades also, but I had the caveat parades, not including championship parades, because those are awesome. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know if I would be allowed to include that on the list, so I I withheld. Um, Instacart, I should have put that one on there. That's overrated. Vodka. Vodka is either okay or it's shit there's no it's a flavorless drink vodka is overrated it sucks ass drink gin like no, you have fucking I, taste buds no gin tastes like a christmas tree so if you like your drinking uh, trees and same along the same vein of the cowboys the yankees no not every year you try uh, how many years is it how many years has it been since um i World am Series what, game? you are what your record is you are what your record is and our record is good now so I thought you were the you. which also by the way, quick RIP to uh Larry Lucchese, I think was his name, former Boston GM. I had no idea that in the year two thousand and two he coined the term the evil empire. I just heard it my like growing up, I always thought that was just the Yankees name their entire fucking life. Shout out that guy. Hey, it gave you guys coined it or you guys copyrighted it. Um I wrote this one down, just cool sneakers. Like people that collect sneakers, like these are, dude, you're a fucking idiot. You're wearing them on your feet. You're walking on them all day. You're stupid. Sneakers suck. Uh, let's see. Award shows. Award shows are bullshit. It's just a bunch of self-important people getting together in a room so they can sniff their own asses about the shit that they do that nobody gives a shit about. 
these both kind of go one i put feminism uh just because ladies i think you've really dropped the bag on this i would give anything to be a 1950s housewife like and i'm not trying to diminish being a homemaker and the work that goes into like running the home but you're telling me i don't have to go to work and deal with people that i don't want to see every single fucking day i'll take that any other week you have to you have to be like Betty Draper was. You have to be raising your kids by yourself while your husband's out just drinking scotch with the boys all day. And like, you I'm gonna got be drinking no scotch one. at home all day, or not but scotch. Fifties housewife, you didn't have friends then. You just were at home all day waiting on your husband, and that seems like a lot of work. Thankless job. Hold on. So you're telling me, I've got in my case a wife coming home to me every day. I've got kids. I don't have to go out and hang out with people I don't like, or really have any friends you're not making any cases that i wouldn't like yeah all of while those betty awesome draper is doing all of those things don's out there drinking scotch with the fellas making bank with the boys doing business meetings banging bitches and then he just comes home like you're missing out on all of those things i mean as long as she's not cheating on me i'm done with literally oh, she will be day. if it's the 50s that's all they did I don't know, man. I'm gonna be at Based home. Based off of the documentary, ripping push-ups and playing Halo. Uh, the last two I had were um, girls, just because. Let's be honest, guys. Nothing compares to the boys. The boys are sick, dude. The boys are sick. And my final one, and Alex will agree with this, Wemby. It's fucking overrated. Yeah, he's overrated. Victor Wembanyama, he's fucking bust. He's a bust. He's a little bitch. I had um, Freddie Adu as my overrated athlete because remember he was going to save soccer. He's like a fourteen-year-old. Oh, like, yeah, he, he is the future of the sport, and then he didn't do anything. Buying a house, I also had. So I, <laughs> I tried it. Not fun. Not cool. But yeah, solid. I mean, solid. In its own way, hand jobs. It's like, yeah, it's still sick, but like, I'm better. It's like a pizza, though. But see, here's the thing: I don't think it's like I don't think it actually is overrated, so that doesn't fit because it's like, yeah. dude, it's still good though. Nobody thinks it's the best. Is it your first choice? It's no, it's not your first. So choice. I take that back. I take that. But back. you'd rather have one than not have one. Yeah, <laughs> you really would. <laughs> you really would. <laughs> so the thing about hand jobs is you don't always have to like them, but you'd rather have one. Yeah. Than not. There, there are other things I'd rather have, but if you're offering, <laughs> I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> All right, um, so that was our mock. That, maybe that's what we should do next week. Things that are properly rated. Hand jobs. They're, pro- hand they're pretty good. Accurate. Um. All right, so we're gonna put the graphic up tomorrow. I guess. Uh. So Thursday, April fourth. Around three o'clock, you guys can vote until Friday around five. Um, that is our mock draft of overrated things. We only got three more of these bad boys, and then the season's over. Pat, will you tell everybody about the Passive Gravy merch store and all the awesome stuff they can get there? Bro, I have been wearing the shit out of my Passive Gravy merch lately. Because not only, and, and honestly, the one of them that I'm wearing was the previous website. It's just the PTG. That's all good and everything. But the shit that they've got out now is so soft. So comfortable. The shorts, oh, bro, even a guy my size, this is a risky business to go with. I've been free balling them shorts. Because it's just, it's it's like your boys are sitting in a cloud and everyone loves it. And ladies, if it's that comfortable for us, imagine how much more comfortable comfortable it'll be for you. Because you don't have to worry about sitting on nothing, squeezing nothing. Ladies, these are so comfortable, you'll manspread and you won't even realize that you're doing it. Now, if you didn't have the It's April Fool Somewhere shirt for this year, guess what? Get it now. Get a jump start on next year. Because that's the whole point of the shirt. April Fool's is gone, but guess what? It's April Fool's every day, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. This is a movement. It's I don't want to say it's a cult. It's a lifestyle. That's a better term. You like joking around? You, It's like me. You're the only... When everybody else is being serious, you like to make a joke. Bam, it's April Fool somewhere. It really is a mindset. It's a way of living. Go to PassiveGravyMerch.com. Get yourself as much as you can. All of that. Get the shorts. 
and the shirt. Guess what? You'll just be throwing out vibes of, yeah, I know what's up. I like to have fun. I get Ladies. It. Yeah. I like Jimmy Buffett. That's why the parrot's there. That's why the parrot's there. I actually cut that part out. Verbal trademark. We don't. We don't. It's not Jimmy Buffett related at all. He doesn't own just parrots. A, just a tropical parrot. Who doesn't yeah. love parrots? Parrots Pass are a merch. Shit. They're a vibe. They really are. Passgaymerch.com. Support the podcast, guys. We don't ask for any money. Get your cool shit. Get some cool shit. Support the podcast that way. Helps keep Robert hanging out with us still because we have to pay him or else he won't hang out with us. That's, that's really the rules he gave us when he started hanging out. But yeah, PastorGavyMerch.com, the official sponsor of the Not Cool segment. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. All right, so if you would like to submit a not cool, basically this is our venting session we get to do every single week. If there's something that happens to you throughout the week that makes you say, hey, man, that's not cool. You stab your toe, not cool. You get stabbed in the arm, not cool. Varying degrees of not cools, but hit us up at Pod on Twitter. Use the hashtag PTG, not cool, and that's how we will search them. We'll read some of the best ones you guys and gals submit to us each week, and uh, we'll read them at the beginning of the segment. Let's start off with... Ashley Wilkins at Buster Healer Mix on Twitter. Ashley has a pretty good one. Um, she says, My dog eating some of my kids' ADHD medicine. That's her not cool. I had to take her to the vet and give her charcoal. Um, just, I don't know what ADHD, I would assume your dog is about to be focused as fuck, but like, when your dog is anywhere near pills and stuff like that, they're terrified. They're like, Oh God, I hope it doesn't kill him. So, yeah, that whole panic had to be awful. And then having to take him to the vet, I'm sure that was a super fun bill. And then all of the having to get it out was probably super great, too, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, solid, solid, not cool, Ada. That sucks. And T's and P's. Hopefully, Ada is is doing great right now. But now that you guys – apparently – if you've already done all of your studying and now you need to go to bed, just eat a little charcoal. Apparently it counteracts ADHD medicine. Yeah, I guess so. I don't really think about that. That's good yeah, to know. <laughs> like, damn, this study guide only took 20 minutes. I thought it was going to take four hours. Chew on charcoal. charcoal. <laughs> get that. Oh, you know what? Maybe this would help. Instead of doing that, you just get that charcoal toothbrush or toothpaste. That yeah. way you can just brush your teeth and go to bed. I chipped a tooth using charcoal uh, floss one time, and I was like, never again. Fuck you, charcoal. Charcoal floss? Yeah, it was, I don't know. I just bought floss at the store, and it was like the first one that I saw, and it was just like a, a like a black thing. I didn't really think anything of it. But it was like charcoal infused floss, and I was like, neat. I don't know what the difference in this is. I just bought it, and then was like, I was trying to, you know, floss out some that's dumb. stuff and that tooth just came out and i was like what the fuck or part of that tooth did bro charcoal yeah, is only one step away from diamonds granted that step is millions of years but it's still just one step away true so don't floss let me get some charcoal mouthwash that's what we'll do i did a juice cleansing you had to drink charcoal and it was like, uh, like all the juices were different colors, and that was the black juice, and it was not that bad. Did it? Did it make your teeth like in your mouth all yeah. black? Yeah, and your poop. Because it was a juice cleanse, so like that was all I really had in me was just that. And then beets make it red, really red. Charcoal juice, black face for your mouth. There's some people are asking. And your hey, poop. stop drinking. <laughs> Stop drinking fucking charcoal, guys. It's not okay. <laughs> What's that? Uh, was it Ashley? Ashley? Mm-hmm. Oh, I got it here. This is from uh, Q the Ace. People keep taking the top off of the automated soap dispenser and dipping their hands instead of using it normal. I know it's soap, but everyone has dirty, greasy mechanic <laughs> hands. Am I wrong for thinking this? Is what the fuck kind of animals are you working with so instead of just hitting the or putting their hands underneath the soap dispenser <laughs> or pushing it maybe they're trying to not get the thing dirty that's Dude. dispensing the soap that, 
Q, I gotta, dude, I gotta come to your work, and I have to <laughs> just yell at this. What kind of crackhead thinking is that? I think everyone you work with is on drugs. Robert, please put the picture that he attached on the podcast when you're doing the video version. So, like, the only reason, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head is that, like, sometimes, even, you know, like, when, when you try and, like, pump the dispenser thing, it, like, maybe is broken and it's not working. And they were like, fuck, the only way I can get this is this way. Like, that could be it. But that is maybe the only guess that I have as to why. Like just yeah, soap. Just use a soap dispenser like that. Don't just dip your fucking hands in it. This, that, I mean, that's that's it's crackhead behavior, is what it is. Are they putting other and shit in there too? Like check check the smell of that thing because I feel like they might be like, are they stealing the soap and replacing it with other shit? Do you have like glue in your hands? Is that what they're? I don't. But you can understand, Pat. It's so if you're just this broke, this broke my brain. If you're just listening, it's one of those soap dispensers that is mounted to the wall. It's got the thing like where you fill it with liquid, then you would just push on the edge of the thing, and it squirts the the soap in your hand. Pretty pretty standard soap dispenser. They have lifted the plastic part off and are just raw dog sticking their hands in there. It has to be that the thing isn't dispensing soap, right? Like maybe that's it. Because if that's not it, animals. Animals. It's also, also, it's funny. It made me laugh. Like that's so. Yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's, if like, it's you not did that working. at work, dude. I mean, they break at work. Like I work at a restaurant. People use them all the time. From time to time, they break. Fucking order a new one. Have management be like, God, show them this. Be like, because you won't order a new one, and this is broken. Dudes are dipping their fucking greasy hands into the soap, which like. You know, whatever yeah. it's so once you wash it, it's supposed to clean it anyway. But you just need to be like, we live in a fucking society. We can't have this going on. <laughs> that is yeah, insane behavior. Pretty wild. I do like um at the restroom at the place that Robert and I are at in our office. Um, the they have an automated towel dispenser. So like you put your hand under it and it goes and it puts towels out, but it always fucks up and like the towels get stuck in there and then you have to pop the side of it and just leave it open until one of the maintenance people comes and fix it. And on, on the front of it, it's like, please do not open the towel rack or like it has like a note. No one listens to it. Cause like, I got to wash my hands and then I got to dry them off. But it's not my fault that this automated thing broke. I will say so this, maybe though, that's what that was. As much as I just complained about that. And I said, dude, just have management. The weird thing <laughs> where I work and I've been telling my GM for months to order new ones. We'll replace the soap dispensers. The towel dispensers just don't fucking work. Like the the battery, the reader on it, the ray reader is so fucked that like you just it it'll just blink constantly. Like ah, oh, it's fucked up. It doesn't work. So I I used to have I I keep a leather in my pocket and I would use the uh, flathead screwdriver to open up the thing on top so I could open it and then once you touch the feed button just real quick and close it again then it will feed. Now I don't even use that. I literally just rip the fucking thing open every time I'm washing my hands now and you do it that way to dispense the towels. So I guess I can't shit on them for not replacing the soap dispenser when we won't even respect or replace the towel ones. And also, by the I, way, if I, you, uh, if you're from the health department, you didn't hear that. Didn't hear it. That was the joke. This is Cause they'll fucking tag guys. us for that shit satirical podcast for sure um, they haven't been down in a while they're fucking due <laughs> but another thing that quentin has a not cool for is a lot of times in a situation like that if you say something somebody like well why didn't you tell so and so and it's like you gotta go tell whoever the guy is it'll fix it. it's like because i i don't want to have to do that that's one more thing i have to do at work and i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna go do my work and then i'm gonna get down with my work and we'll go so yeah that sucks, Quentin. And uh, these are two solid not cools to start us off this week, guys. Um, let's go, guys, and Ashley, excuse me. Um, Tessa Goriant, Tessa G, is at Tessa, G-O-R-Y-A-N-C-E on Twitter. And Tessa says her not cool is when your health insurance decides to stop covering your medication. Yep, that's a uh, real some bitch, ain't it? I've had that happen before and they're just like, Oh, by the way, we stopped giving a shit that you still need this medicine. We just don't have any. Hopefully there are alternatives. 
it's real unfortunate when you got to make the decision of do I change health insurance? Do I stop taking my medication? Or, or sorry, do I keep taking it but pay out of pocket for it? Or do I try and supplement it with alcohol? Now, we all know what I would do. The alcohol. Wouldn't recommend it. Would not recommend it for most people because, you know, I'm built different. Right. But yeah, that sucks fucking ball, especially because you never know. There's so many medications and so many different different health providers nowadays. Sorry about that. My uh, my internet went out. My power went out. What a Flag loser. Back on. Yeah, this is 15 minutes after what you just heard from us. But shout out to you guys for uh, for making it through that. Appreciate you guys, Pat and uh, and Robert, for, for sitting through that. That was – sorry, but the Yankees won in that time. Shout out to the Yankees. How about that? Huh? Look at them. Look at them so far. Six and one. Um, all right, so Tessa was the last. Not cool we did. Let's move on to – this is Glamour, Glamour, Perry. Glamour Perry at Glam for Life on Twitter. Glamour says her not cool is having to wait at the Apple store. Like I got reservations at a Michelin star restaurant for over an hour just to get my AirPods fixed because my dog thinks it's funny to listen to them. So they sound fuzzy and munch on the case. This is the second set that has happened. That This has happened. To, so, so your, your dog, dog listens to your AirPods and then chews on them. And also, first of all, I just so you can chew in the case where you're listening. I don't before we even get down to how it happened. uh, How dare you blame the the sweet puppy? I saw photographic evidence. Anything wrong? It did make it look like it could have been. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you leave your delicious looking AirPods in an area where your tiny little puppy could get to it? Great point. Seems like a you problem. How dare right. you? How right. look at me. Eyes in the camera. How dare you blame that dog? Right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, that sucks. I've had to have the AirPods replaced multiple times. They're not a cheap purchase, and it's not ideal. Bro, I'm cord it's game at all. for life. Cord for, game yeah. for life, dude. Also, I mean, it's mostly because I've got tiny ears and like AirPods and shit will just fall out of them. Um, they really should make the air like actual air pods. I wouldn't buy them because they'd be too expensive. But the ones that go over the ear, because that's what I've got to wear. They do. The ones that go over the ear and go in, they do. Yeah. Okay, I'm still not buying them because they're probably like fucking eighty dollars. Probably, probably more than that. <sighs> you guys are so dumb. The amount of money people spend on air pods. Is well, so I just dumb. like just get the, headphones. I just like that I can keep in my pocket. They don't get tangled, and like I, I don't know. I'm used to AirPods at this point. They're convenient to me. I'm How tangled you do you guys see? That's the only argument is that they don't get tangled in my pocket. That is the little only argument to have AirPods. Because other than that, it feels just... cool having a little pack walking around with you, like no AirPods. I mean, I carry a can around at all times, so I can't really complain. But Glamour, that sucks. But you know what? You're throwing good money after bad. Just get some corded ones, or just keep you know just. Try not to pass the buck onto your beautiful, just sweet little, adorable little baby yeah. puppy. Well, you have the backup personal responsibility is a big thing. That is. Um. So those are our listeners submitted not cools. If you'd like to submit yours again it's at Passagray Pod, use the hashtag PTG not cool for us to search through them. I can start off with ours. Um. Uh, my not cool is that I went to a Easter brunch with my family, and my mom picked this. French restaurant, and I'm not classy enough to know like how to order up of a French menu. Like everything was in French. Um, we were like, okay, it's a brunch. Like, what's y'all's mimosa situation? Like, oh, you would like a mimosa? And I was like, there's not like mimosa pictures we do here. Also, like next door to the store, it was a Dolce Gabbana. So like, not my, you know, not I didn't yeah. fit in. I did not. Feel like I felt like they were going to at any point in time be like, you don't, what are you doing here, sir? Please leave. I mean, I feel like Easter is like Junior Mother's Day and that moms call the show on Easter still. Yeah. Yeah. Duh. And I would never, I can't say I would never because I'm about to. I hate to criticize Kim. Right. But you got to know your audience. You can't be bringing the Middleton boys to a French It was restaurant. good food. It was really good food. We just like I was the menu like, was gonna at least be in English. I mean, it, 
like there were English words, but it was like all the food was like French food. So it was like, pom, pa, si, ha, da, ha, ba. and I was like, I don't know what any of that stuff is. I got, I got the steak frites and a lot of steak the stuff. Fr- I was, steak and fries. Steak and fries. No, I mean, I could understand that. So that was very easy. I had like very Were the descriptions with at least in, in English? There were no pictures. Yeah, I would have the description. So you kind of like got that to go off of it for. Oh, but like, oh okay. A lot, I- well, not not all, not like vague descriptions. So a lot of the stuff I would be like googling the name of whatever the dish was, and like, okay, that's what that looks like. You didn't get the foie gras. No, I did not get the foie gras. Or yeah, the I escargot. mean, my dad made ham, and I ate a bunch of deviled eggs and ham, and ham potatoes. Um, ham always yeah, so- plays. I got steak and steak and fries and um, just had like four espresso martinis because that seemed classy. Yeah, it's I'm not getting hammered at brunch. I'm having that's uh, what my goal was going to be. I like, you know, you normally go to brunch. It's like, here's pictures of Bloody Mary's, Bellini's and Mar- and and, um, and and mimosas. Knock yourself out. And I was like, Fuck. I mean, also, you've got a designated DD right now. So you got to use them all you can. Right. Sorry, right. babe. I hate to reek like alcohol in your face, but a man's got to do what a man does, you know. This brunch, I could take a nap. It would be great, but yeah, I'm not classy enough for classy restaurants, and just sometimes I stick no. with a sore thumb, so that sucks. The the classiest things I own are like polos that you would wear golfing, like for a top. No, yeah. that's not true. I do have some dress shirts, but don't ever invite me somebody somewhere to eat. Where I have to I have to wear a dress shirt, yeah, because I'm just gonna spill on it anyway. Wear your apron. You could wear your apron, mm-hmm. bro. I so this isn't even not cool. I'll just tell you a little story real quick. I was at work today, and you know we get our or, aprons in from a big company that just sends linens and shit like that. And the apron that I've been using for the last couple of days, one of the cords that you tie behind the back was a broken cord that was just kind of tied together. Like it snapped and they just fucking tied it together and sent it back out. And today it, as I was tying it, the thing came unknotted and just, and I go, fuck this. I'm not re-knotting it. I got a new one. By the end of the day, filthy, filthy again. There's so much shit on it. I don't know. This is why I wear an apron. I don't know where all the shit that's on it came from. And it's attached to me. I have no fucking idea. There's so, there's like white shit where it looks like it could have been like dried cum from like six days ago. I don't fucking know. I, at the end of the day, I was taking off. Like, where did all this come from? No fucking idea. That's when people are like, oh, are you the chef? I'm like, no, this is literally what I tell the tables. They go, are you the chef? Because they see me wearing an apron when I drop my food. I go, no, I tend to spell shit on myself. I don't say that to every table. Like old people, I won't cuss to. Only the but. ones that you know it's going to crush. <laughs> You know, like in wait and uh, what was it? Uh, the slam and salmon. When she's like, "No, it wasn't waiting. It was the slam and salmon." Was like, "I don't normally do this, but you guys seem real cool, so I'll cuss with you. I'll do that with tables. Makes the more homey vibe. People like that." Yeah, but yeah, my apron. Feel, I'm gonna wear it for five more days at least until somebody points it out to me. I just wear it. I don't give a shit. But uh, yeah, that wasn't even not cool, but that worked. But yeah, Alex, I'm, I'm very sorry that happened to you, bud. Thanks, man. Your mom should be more considerate of your feelings on Bunny Day. Hey, it was for Easter for her, so I'm yeah. cool going to French restaurants for that. I have uh, I can run through mine real quick. Uh, one, right. I'm just I'm so fucking jealous of Robert's shirt that he's wearing right now. I want that shirt so badly. <laughs> it's <laughs> such a good shirt. I can't stop staring at it. That's all I've thought about this entire podcast. So I'm jealous of that. Uh, my second one is after we did the Bazaar Gravy merch store ad and I ran off to take a pee real quick before these not cools. I did that thing where you pee really quick and you're trying to get it out of there. And as I like finished and went to flush and pulled my pants up and turned, I just felt like some piss go down my leg a little. Like, mm, you, you yeah. know, what? ladies, you yeah. might not know. Fellas, you know, you just feel a couple drops. Ladies, take a break. Like, Fellas, you know what I'm talking about. And you're like, oh, how did that miss the box? Like it hit my calf. I was like, I don't even know how that fucking happened. Yeah. So I got a little bit of pee on my leg right now. It'll dry. Um, sterile. Which, as every guy knows, you do nothing about. You just go, ah, <laughs> and then you push it out of your mind. Yep. It happens. Get past it. Uh, get so, past ladies, it. 
this is something, if, ladies, if you didn't know, at any moment in time, your guy could have pee on him. Anytime. If he's in a rush. If he says he's got to pee in a rush, just say, take your time. He's probably got pee on him still. Yeah. Either way. Uh, my last one is uh, this company that I get, like, I'm not, no free ads, but it kind of rhymes with Schmab Schmatics. Uh, they've got these really comfortable shorts that have, like, have liners in them. So like you don't even wear underwear with it. And they had this mega sale. So I bought like four pairs or three or four pairs. I think it was three pairs. And I thought they all were lined and only one was. So then I just even discounted, paid like, this sounds like nothing. And just shows how cheap I am. They're $11 a pair. Normally they're like 60, but they're just trying to burn inventory. I was like, I paid $11 a pair for shorts and they weren't even lined. That's how cheap I am. They're like most people are gonna be like, yeah, that's what shorts fucking call. No, not for me. Yeah, <laughs> but a Walmart buy six dollar pairs do. No, they are, and they are. But they're still phenomenally comfortable shorts. But like, I got them in the mail, and I realized that like it didn't say lined on the package. I was like, I gotta wear underwear with these. Ugh. <laughs> Even the lined ones, I'll still wear boxers with. I don't like. I can't because then the boxers bunch up. Dude, you gotta have the boxer briefs, man. I do know that's no, I really all I wear is briefs now. I don't even wear boxers. It's all briefs, but like then the briefs bunch up. And when briefs bunch up, that is the worst. See, I don't have that sucks. You're like, well, even in, well, I'm fat as shit. So it's, we have different thigh sizes. Yeah, could be different. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I bought a bunch of shit incorrectly because I don't fucking look at fine print. Not ideal. Not ideal. Robert, what do you got? Since you're not cool. You know, I really couldn't think of anything. I really had to like think about like what has happened in the past week. It's been a pretty good week. Hashtag blessed. Yeah, exactly. But I will say just the, the smallest of things. Last week I did go to Astros game and I had some chili cheese fries and I burned my tongue. And I was kind of unpleasant <laughs> until, like, another day. Another day. Another I thought you were going to say Pat likes this shirt, so I have to get rid of it. <laughs> To add that to it's a solid, just wholesome, not cool. Sometimes that happens. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want the fries to get all soggy. I don't really like the soggy fries. So, like, I had to like eat it fast. And yeah, I get you. Burn my tongue. I feel on that. Fries are actually like when they're chili cheese fries, it's one of the few, few foods that I don't mind being soggy. Chili, I yeah. get that you don't, but like something about it, it's like, yeah, but it's chili cheese fries. Soggy's good. Yeah, I don't want it too soggy. I feel you on that though. I, I, I mean, I am who I am. I'll eat anything cold or soggy. I really that wants it like shit. chili. I'm not. A, I'm not a complainer when it comes to the food. The food is here. I don't give a shit how it got here. I'm just gonna eat it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, those are solid. Solid. Not cool. segment, gang. Um. Again, at Pascal Pod hashtag PTG not cool. If you'd like to participate, let's move on to the answers segment. We start the pre come segment beginning of the show where we ask any questions we have, and we encourage you to do that exact same thing. Pitch some ideas to us. Give us some power rankings, even though we we aren't power ranking anything this week. But give us some stuff to power rank, stuff like that. You want some uh parenting advice? We got you. I'm a soon to be parent. You want some health tips? We got you. We're basically doctors, and maybe relationship advice too. We also can help you there. But uh, go to at Pod on Twitter. Use the hashtag PTG Answers. Send them to us at Pod hashtag PTG Answers. You can also go to um, answers at PassagreyPod.com and email them or answers at PassagreyPod.com. Email them to us there or uh, go to our website, PassagreyPod.com and just click contact us. Jesse will forward those over to us. But we do prefer Twitter is the best way to reach us. At Pod. use the hashtag PTG Answers for us to search for them. Uh, let's start off with the intro. Well, just answer the question. Why just answer the question? Be honest. No big deal. Yeah, answer. Answer the question. Don't change the subject. Just answer the fucking question. Answers, 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 answers. Any questions? All right, first question this week comes from... I got to break in before that. I've got one I've got to add in right now. Are the Cowboys on the hot seat? The uh, Kansas City Chiefs were trying to renovate their stadium, and it got knocked down by Kansas City. They're not going to pay for the renovations. So the Dallas mayor, I believe his name is Eric Johnson. I'm trying to – my screen's being weird right now. 
He wants them to move to Dallas. Are the Chiefs going to be Dallas's new team? Or are the Cowboys on the way out? That's a also, bandwagon thing for Dallas to do too. Is that the dumbest political move of all time to be the mayor of Dallas and try and bring another team into Dallas? That dude's going to that that comment right there lost in re-election. He's going to be gone. He probably just hates the Cowboys. I would actually maybe do that too. Just be like, what if we have a bunch of teams here? They're gonna the they're gonna try and change it to the to Dallas is America's city, so that now they can just take the Chiefs and the Cowboys can fuck off. I mean, hey, when you're that delusional for that many years about how good your team is, eventually you get sick of it, right? Yeah. Hmm. So that's could imagine. Hey, could could you imagine New York? Bringing another team into the city that wasn't already established, just taking a winner and bringing them in. No, New Yorkers love what they love. I couldn't I imagine it happening to Green Bay. Man, Dallas, what a trash sports city that must be, huh? Well, if the Chiefs went there, they'd suck immediately. So, oh, they would. Rush, Rashi Rice Jerry already Jones has would a find problem a way to buy him in Dallas too. So, Ugh. yeah. Well, I mean, Rashi Rice seems like he would be good on the Cowboys, so I guess they just want to get him into Dallas. Maybe that's know? what they were doing. Um, yeah, yeah, just another criminal. I don't see anything happening with that, though. <laughs> I just want to point out that Dallas is a shit city, and they're full of shit fans, and they're shit. Um, okay. Our first question this week is from Alex O. He's at Alex McThunder1 <laughs> on Twitter, and Alex O says, if all of Will Ferrell's characters had a battle royale to the death, which character would win? I know the answer. I just want to hear what you guys say. So I power ranked them in order of who would win the most. Um, I think I don't know why I picked them necessarily. Actually, Mugatu. I don't want to fuck with Mugatu. Mugatu would win in a fight from Zoolander. He just, with, with the cool I hair, he had the curls. Dude, no, I feel like Mugatu's got a lot that we don't know about that'll fuck with us. I mean, he invented the piano key necktie. He could drop one of those on us and win. Uh, Ron Burgundy is two. Ron Burgundy would like, – we already saw him win a fight. Then I got Chaz Reinold from Wedding Crashers, Jackie Moon from Semi-Pro, and Ashley Schaefer, Ashley Schaefer BMW. So uh, that's those are the five guys I got that would win. You're in that so order. wrong. But I would pick Mugatu first. Robert, do you have any guesses? I know you haven't seen any Will Ferrell movies. Yeah, I'm currently looking up at a Google – Okay, well, since you haven't seen it, I'm gonna go with this. Alan Gamble 100%. Gata, Gata could be actually, I would probably put Gata at number two over all of Alex's list. Well, okay, so number two is either Alan Gamble from the other guys, slash Gata. He was a pimp, and we all know Gata ain't Gata, don't play no shit. Gata ain't never been about playing no shit, or Ron Burgundy. Because Ron is scrappy and has proven himself in a fight. But if all Will character or Will Ferrell characters were going to have a battle royale, the winner would be James King from Get Hard. He was trained. He knows Capoeira, dude. He's going to win. Dude, I didn't he think took out, get hard. dude, he took out trained fucking security on that boat, man. That, that Capoeira right. goes hard. I and you can cover ground. You can movie. fight multiple at a time. See, see. It's where you gotta you gotta pay attention to the details. Yeah, Man. completely blanked on that one. Solid. Solid. Also, uh, honorable mention. I can't remember the character's name, but from kicking and screaming because I think he's gonna have Ditka to back him up. Yeah. Solid. And you can't fuck with Ditka. Skip past the Italians. Pass it to the Italians. <laughs> and he had Robert Duvall in that movie as his dad. So yeah, that's 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 a team right there. A three man team. That's a fucking team. Um. All right, Matt Olson. Good to hear from you again. I feel like Matt's been really involved with the pod lately. He's what up, Matty? Us in. What's up, Matty? And Matt says maybe Matt's a rookie of the year. I don't know. He hasn't told us if he's a rookie or not. But Matt says, do you think infants enjoy infancy as much as adults enjoy adultery? Ooh. Probably not, because I don't think they know what's going on. I, I would say I would say they enjoy it more because their whole the guilt life too. is just dude. See, that's the thing is there is a guilt that goes with adultery, but also yeah. to do it, I feel like you kind of have to be a little bit of a sociopath to put people's feelings on the side. But babies are kind infants, of infants. It's just like though. 
But it, it, but here's the thing. Infants, Babies don't also really care about feelings. Because you're just shitting on yourself and you can't control it and you cry. You don't know how to communicate. But also, people cater to your every whim, dude. Yeah, you're like waited on. They just bring you food. They love you unconditionally. Mm. Nobody gets mad at me. They're always like, oh, you shit your pants. Oh, you're so sweet. I love you. And everyone's talking to you like this all the time. And it's so nice. But my whole thing is like, also, I don't think infants enjoy it because they don't think they know what's going on. Yeah, but, but just life is sick. They don't know what not enjoying things is. They just enjoy life because it's sick. dude. Right. Okay. People take care of them. But I'll side with you on that. I'll say infants enjoy infancy more than adultery than that hey i shit my pants wipe my ass and someone just yeah, comes and does pants. it for you who cares you know no one gives they, a shit. They're, they're changing Have another you nap while changing you you piss in their face and they find it cute hey here's a boob which i guess in adultery if you find the right person you can piss in their face too but they have yeah, to be consenting you, as a baby you don't need consent for, for that, shit usually so yeah Solid, hey, solid question, they, Matt. I think they enjoy it more. I like that. Uh, they also don't have bills, so that's a big, that's that's a big, a big part, part of it. it. Yep. Um, Raimundo Benavidez, he's at KMundoB on Twitter, and Mundo says, if you have a sex dream about a friend, do you tell them, or do you just keep it to yourself? I think it hinges on whether or not you want to have sex with the friend. I also think that, too, and I also think that this is an incredibly like varying scale. I would say no most times. Most times you say no unless you think you actually have an opportunity, but still, like, I don't, I don't, I would say no. No. I never have. You don't tell them. But if I had a sex dream about one of my buddies, I think, and I think most guys wanted, I would tell my friend. I'd be like, dude, we had a, I had a dream that we fucked. But me and my friends are also like weirdly close. I think yeah. I would tell one of the boys if I did. And honestly, I don't know if I've ever had any at least semi-close female friends that I wouldn't have sex with. So that would also be weird. But if we were close enough, I'd be like, I had a dream we fucked. But if it's someone you have a crush on and want to fuck, I don't think you can tell them. Unless you're absolutely certain they want to bang you too. Well, you got that's just, the way that you just ruins it. the friendship. The way you got to present it is not like, hey, I had a dream we fucked. Like, hey, I had a, you were in my dream last night. And then they'll be like, oh, wow, what what happened? And they'll be like, God, I don't really want to get too much into it. And then they'll be like, what do you, you have mean? To do it. And then you just kind of like, you kind of like play that way. And then just be like, oh, okay, maybe I'll tell you over dinner, blah, blah, blah. And then you try and play it smooth. And then be like, I didn't have a dream at all, bitch. I think the way you have to there, play it, nailed it. Is, is you do it like Dwight and uh, Oscar. I had a sex dream. And they go, about who? And you just stare. So they go, about who? And you're like, I think you already know. <laughs> you just wait until they figure it out. You're like, hey, yeah. you just keep staring. Because uh, at least that adds some comedy into it. It also adds a little fear into it, which isn't great. The only problem with like the, the but... telling them about your dream is I don't give a shit about anybody's dream. I'll listen to my wife's dreams. My wife remembers every detail of her dreams. That's an I don't, I don't. Thing she had. I, I'm like, I don't I know. She don't agree with that. Did. I just don't care if somebody's listening about their dreams. Like you can tell me about it, but just know like I am I've hit the snooze button on this conversation for however I, the story lasts. I and then I did this and then this happened, and then there was so and so was there, and then this happened, and then we did that, and oh my god, then this happened, but like, cool, none of that was real. See, see, that's not it's not the dream though. That's the problem is people go, I don't give a shit about your dreams. I'd love to hear about your dreams. It matters if who's telling the dream is a good storyteller. That's the key to dreams. Maybe Most people suck ass at telling story. stories. Yeah. Some people are good storytellers and they know how to like make it interesting because otherwise if it wasn't interesting, they wouldn't tell you. Most people, and I put this about 90% of the population, don't know how to tell a fucking story. So they just go, I had a dream where we were golfing and then we, uh, we were eating ice cream after that. And then all of a sudden we were at David Buster's, but then we were back to eating ice cream. Like, dude, shut up. It's not that the dream sucks. It's that you suck ass at telling about dreams. I like when somebody, if you're doing something, if we went to 
some restaurant and um this this happened to me not that long ago where it was, uh, somebody was like oh my god i had a dream i this was it i had this in my dream i'm like oh my god that is so crazy and i did it with that same exact intensity and it like it matched it perfectly it was great you no either have way? to be that's insane to tell me about your dream you either have to be a good storyteller or it has to be like a dude i had a dream where i shit my pants last night you're like what that's the whole story. Like, there's no, like, no, I don't know, man. I just shit my pants. That That's kind of funny, at least. But if you're trying to, if you're telling me about the story goes past five seconds, it better be engaging. Like 99.9999999% of the dreams that I do remember, which are very few, are just bad dreams. It's just the only dreams I feel like I tell people about. To work. The only ones I tell people about. About a thing it's like dude i had nine dreams last night where i pissed my pants a and i woke up in time to pants. not piss my pants dreams. well i mean it'll happen like when i'm i'm very <laughs> good happen. at it now every once in a while it doesn't happen enough, maybe two times a year i'll just all, all night long i'll have dreams where i'm just pissing in my dreams because obviously my bladder's full and i gotta pee usually it's after a night where i drink i don't know 76 beers whatever the fuck it was but then if you, once you wake up in the middle of the night and you feel you haven't pissed yourself and you have time to get to the bathroom, you're like, oh, yes. When you pee on yourself, it's not fun, which yeah. actually probably would be a better telling of the story. Like I had nine dreams, I pissed my pants and I woke up and I pissed on myself. But I remember um, but, a couple of years ago, I told the story where like I just started to pee on myself, but I woke yeah, up as it was happening it. and cut it off. And luckily I was laying on my back. So I got it, none of it got on the mattress. Just a little bit of pee in my boxers right there. My briefs. But those are the only sto- dreams I tell about. Because other than that, my dreams aren't fucking interesting. Yeah, but um, if you have a dream about a friend, I would just like just don't tell them. Most people don't give a fuck about your dreams, right? Unless you were trying to fuck them, don't tell them. And then find yeah, a nice I said, way. I said, if you're trying to fuck them, you don't. I think you just tell them if you are trying to fuck them, right? No, you don't tell them about the dream. Be a you quick just way. try and work your way around other ways, too. But, I mean, that's if you don't want to fuck around, that's a direct way. Like, dude, I have a sex dream about us. And then you gauge their response. That's probably a quicker way to make the fucking happen. Yeah. Maybe do that, then. Do what Pat said. I don't know. That I don't know. I don't have sex dreams. I don't either. I've never had a wet dream in my life. Got to be awesome. I did when I was like a kid. It's shocking for how horny I am. Um, Yeah. I don't ever have sex dreams. So it's all the movies, guys. Um, Our next, oh, not last one. Our our next one is from Alexis Garcia. She's at Alexis Texas underscore on Twitter. And Alexis says, on what planet would Tony and Carmela Soprano name their daughter Meadow? Um, When they lived in Jersey, home of the, which is also known as the Meadowlands. That's just my guess. I didn't even think about that, but it's just, it seems like a pretty name that women would like. And as soon as Carmela said, I want to name the, name the daughter Meadow, as a dad, you bow out. Also, David Chase came up with all the names because he's the creator of the series and he used a lot of people from the show that had the same last names or first names as people that he knew growing up. So it's very possible that David Chase knew somebody named Meadow that he could have used. But I know Satriale was uh, a friend of his and that was the, the pork store they eat at. They're, they're always hanging out. I know Melfi was somebody that he knew growing up. So like, he just used names. I mean, also, people. I just, I've never spoken about this to anyone. I just, I just feel like it's common knowledge as a dude. If you and your wife are having a kid and it's going to be a girl and she says, she, you let her name that one. So that if the boy comes, you get the name. Well, you get the veto names. You can veto names, but also Meadow's not a bad name. Like, Meadow's it's not, not like, what, 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 is it not Italian enough? What are they going to name her? Fucking Marie? Oh, well, it doesn't end in a vowel. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, but it's Marie. What other Italian girl names? Are? It's fucking, they're all Marie. Maria. Marie. It's Peter, Paul, and Marie are like, like, Pay, like go to an Italian family gathering, and that's half the people that yeah. yell that yell I one mean, of those three. We're, I'm basing it entirely off of that one scene from Goodfellas, and she's like, yeah. "All the guys were Peter and Paul. That's Every exactly, girl yeah. was named Marie." But like, it's kind of yeah, true. Like, I mean, it was based also, off of a stereotype. There was a stereotype because it was a stereotype for a reason. Meadow is, and I'm, 
always team don't name your kid weird shit. Meadow's in that good area where it's unique, but it's not like a weird name. Like if somebody was like, my name's Meadow, I wouldn't be like, that's a weird fucking, I've heard Meadow before. And it's you a call good girl's Med. name. Med's a cool name. Also, I mean, it's it's for a girl. Like you name her Meadow. That's a cute girl name. Because I think I when say... you think of names for, especially girls, you think of when they're little girls and they're in their Easter dress and they're all cute and little. So Meadow's a great name for a little girl. And Carmela said, I want to name it Meadow. And Tony was like, I don't fucking give a shit. Whatever. <laughs> in that world. That's the world in which it happened. One of the uh, only things I saw of it was um, the name Meadow means creaming to cream something. <laughs> but I don't <laughs> think that's true. Also, I would say this, this cream was sent by face. Alexis Garcia. Nowadays, I feel like one of the few names you could veto as a guy is if your wife goes, I want to name my daughter Alexis. And we're all like, no. If there's a very <laughs> famous porn star that has that name, it is now vetoed. Alexis, Texas, yeah. I want to name my daughter Riley. Nope, not we're not doing Riley either. I could have gone with Alexis, though, because it would have just been like I basically named after me. Yeah, but also at some point you'd be like... <sighs> Alexis, Texas. I still think Alexis is a fantastic name, Alexis. I would never let Pat shit on your name like that. I love. I think it's a great name. I don't think I could allow it. I like when people say, like, that's a cool name. But thanks, my parents gave it to me. Yeah. Neat. Just stick, um, th- That's why I'm always team. Stick just, just, just the regular names. Find we'll a good name we'll and go with that. it. Um, all right, final question this week. It's Dave T that sends it in. He's at PPWL1 on Twitter. And Dave T says, four-way stops. The scourge of the earth. No. Just don't be a I, shitty driver. Well, it throws people off. Um, I do hate when you get to a four-way stop and it's like somebody, like you're the last one there and you're like, dude, go, go. And then they don't go. And then you're like, do I go? And then they start to go. My my life hack um, for the four way stop is, or just stop signs in general, is like if they haven't gone, just point. I don't mind being the last person and with anybody I'm there at. Like if we all follow the directions, fine. It should be a pretty quick little thing. Point. And then if they don't go, I mean, you go. I get it. It can get in the point where you start to wave and they're waving you at the same moment. You point, and then you, you wave. The nudge, wave is too friendly. Nudge, the point like sends a message. You go. This means you come well, on, just you point, go. Here's, a, go. here's the thing Your about turn. the point, though. You need the motion of the wave because sometimes if you just point with, with glare on windshields and shit, you can't really see. But if you you can kind of see somebody waving. Do the Disney two-finger point. Well, point. The, that's less likely for me to know what the fuck you're doing. Point. You'll think I'm pointing. But like, it's, it's just follow the rules. You, it's worked for me. first, and then you go, go to the right, and then just... Or just run worst all case the scenario, stop signs. He, here's why it's not the scourge of the earth. Because worst case scenario, it's eight seconds, twelve seconds while you're figuring it out. Yeah. Now it sucks when like you pull up and somebody goes, and then obviously the next person should be going, but then somebody else juts out when it's not their turn. You're like, okay, like there's asshole like in any form of driving, there's just assholes and people that don't understand it. But I love the. Sucks. They're not and that I bad. Love, I mean, I hate the uh, the four-way stops that happen when a light goes out and then everybody just has to sit at the intersection and play that game. And you just got to look at the guy next to you and be like, buddy, when you go, we all go. All right? If we're all going together, we're all, you're moving, we're moving. I'm moving with you. And, like, I try and follow the order, but sometimes you see the car next to you go and you're just like, fuck it, we're going with them. Oh, yeah, Especially no, that's Especially if it's on the outside, you're like, you're getting hit first. I'm not getting hit. Yeah, like, if you pull up, kind of out of order behind them but then it's, it's like a half tick you... wait and you have to roll that stop sign because it's their turn to go you just go because you're not yeah, slowing anybody out down in traffic you're actually helping traffic by continuing to go when traffic is already blocked by the other person you should do that four-way stops big speed bump of the earth i would say they're annoying it's because other bump. people don't know how to handle them but so if you're a good bumps. driver that's 
Yeah. Perfect analogy. It's the speed bump of the earth, oh. not the scourge. Cause it's like you got the people that don't fucking know how to do speed bumps. The people like a lot of people in my apartment complex where they think they have to come to a complete stop before they then inch over the speed bump. Then you got the people that go full speed, like as fast as they can over the speed bump. Then you got people like me that kind of just coast over the speed bump. But it's like, you don't need to hit the brakes, but you just got to go like, let your head, let your feet off the gas a little bit. So I hate people that call them speed humps. I hate that. Some of them are are. called speed humps. Have you seen the speed? No, that's not. No, I've smaller ones. No, but 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 people will be like, yeah, speed humps. I'm like, that's it's a bump. Yeah, no, it's a bump. Or, it's a speed or, bump. I agree. Or like the ones that were installed at our high school that were too high and they were bottoming out every car going over them. Yeah, they they had to like shave them down. Was- yeah, and they lasted like one day, and they're like, we need to fix this immediately <laughs> before parents start calling us about fixing their cars. Yeah, yeah, but um, boy stops do suck. I will give you that, Dave. But I don't know if there's a scourge of the earth. We'll say that for other stuff, you know? Um, again, answers at Passgate Pod if you'd like to. PassgatePod.com if you'd like to email them to us. But we do prefer Twitter. Uh, hit us up at Passgate Pod. Use the hashtag PTG answers for us to search for them. Um, I am at Alex J. Middleton. Pat's at not Pat Dion. Robert is at Robert Barbosa03. We are at Pass the Gravy Pod on all socials. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Give us a follow on all of them. If you are not watching the YouTube version, go over to youtube.com slash at Pass the Gravy Podcast or just search for Pass the Gravy Podcast. Subscribe to us. Go watch that. Have all the ja ja jaws you could ever imagine. If you're watching us, go hit play on the audio version. That'll help us out. Uh, we do have an early episode, another early release next week. We're going to put it out probably Tuesday night. Uh, we got the Rod Ryan Show golf tournament going down. So we're going to record a little bit early for that. Um, that is about it. Five star review on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever else you guys listen to podcasts. Um, pass the great merch.com, guys. Go support the podcast, get some dope merch. I promise you, you won't be disappointed with anything you get there. And uh, don't forget, let's uh, let's unzip those zippers, fellas. A little zipper cleavage, all right? A little zipper cleavage for us this week. Bringing it back. We're owning it. We're making it our own. Now, before we go, let's go around the room and pick a random celebrity. We're going to do a random celebrity generator with. Who are you guys going Robert with? Duvall. Kim Kardashian. Robert Duvall, Kim Kardashian. I'm going to go JoJo Siwa. Ooh. Because she's been in the news lately. Apparently, she's trying to join Kiss from the screenshot of I, I saw. Yeah. Face and- paint. She put out this song that my wife and I just play and as, as a joke to each other and laugh at it a lot. But go check it out if you'd like a little a little joke. All right. JoJo Siwa, Robert Duvall, Kim Kardashian. We are starting on Timbaland. Timbaland is who we start on. Shoes? Michael Richards. <laughs> Kramer. Hey, Jerry. All right, we're going to do it again. We're doing it again. Napoleon Bonaparte. All right, one more. One more. Third time's charm. Come on, JoJo. Come on, JoJo. Mary Manilow. Nope. Damn. Nope. Nope. Nobody still. We're all shut out on the year. We're going to get one of these, and it's going to be the most epic celebration. When we do a live one (laughs) next time, we should not. We're not going to end the live until somebody in the room gets it. That's not what we're going to do at all. We're going to do it and somebody will get <laughs> nope, it. And nope. We're going to do a five year podcast. It's just we're, our life is going to become a stream. I love that for us. It'll be no great. It's going to be, around. It's gonna be the around. Truman show, but just us following each other. But just us on FaceTime at all times. Just hitting You're the button over and over. You're going to love it. All right, guys. We love you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, sorry about the, any technical difficulties, although I think we're going to be able to make that sound like it didn't happen at all. You guys have a great rest of your week. Go Red Wings. And until I talk to you next time, pass the gravy. Yeah, bitches. Gravy gang, gang, gang. Baby, pop the top and let it spread. As we're listening to Pass the Grave, we're going fishing for your bitch today. We're drunk in Houston, eh? Houston, baby. Now we go ahead and